recording again. Hi guys. Uh, so, 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 so hi guys. So sorry about that. It's, uh, 1 AM in the morning on 8, 13, 2024. And I lost two videos today due to, um, uh, inter internet outages in my rural area, which is something that does happen a little bit more than city, but not very common. And, and honestly, it like happens a little bit more commonly than it used to. But yeah, uh, we are, uh, you know, we're back with it and I'm going to load all the games that I had running, but I mean, I had to restart my computer to, to even make sure I wasn't like something computer side, but it wasn't, I definitely had like an outage and, and so here we go. Uh, got to, got to load Eve FFXI and wow play by oops. Bye. ...was considered gender neutral. And if you don't know or are unsure of somebody's pronouns, then using they, them... I probably lost everybody. I'm sorry. I, I have a bad internet connection in the rural area when it rains. When it rains here, something happens to my cable. It's kind of annoying. It's, it's stupid, but, you know, it's fun. It's still a really good fucking connection normally, you know. Wait, no, I, uh, I, I, I was on Cat Money when we DC'd. Yeah. Look at that nice. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's a good signal. So okay. Uh, Pressing the entire industry to talk about Ava Tyson and then criticize the ones who did speak out. Pokemon says I don't know all the details regarding the Chris situation, but I want to make it clear. Any inappropriate behavior towards minors is unacceptable regardless of who you are. It's the same people you see this as an opportunity to attack the trans community. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how it sounds, man. It, that's how it looks. Satan runs the industry and Pokemon is proof. Chris gets caught DM being a file and she defends the trans community instead of disavowing Chris. These are the standards of every streamer right now. They care more about the demonic trans ideology than kids getting groomed. He continued to express his thoughts and feelings about Ava what? through a barrage of tweets that were getting him an above average amount of engagement and a ton of support. And have to lie. Fucking nutcase. Chris Tyson is a woman. Which is so funny, because in a world where this dude is losing everything for touching children, messaging children, people care more about misgendering a pedophile than the actual pedophile acts. Sneeko is a real one for that. People who are defending Chris's pronouns are undercover pedos. And of course, he had to send some shots at Charlie. Today I was looking at Twitter, I was looking for what's trending the most. And this is the weirdest thing. It's mixed with spooky diarrhea and death and mixed in a smoothie. So, Chris Tyson was actually a pedophile, but this guy Sneeko that I don't like because he tells the truth, how is he gonna tell me that I'm afraid of losing the poopy diarrhea Mr. Beast collab? So during Charlie's video about Ava, he shifted the focus to discuss Sneeko's opinion on the age of consent. Now Sneeko, I hope you're ready for the cold water here because I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. When this story broke, I thought for sure I would have actually bet money that you would have been some kind of contrarian talking about how this is actually not a big deal and everyone who's pretending to be outraged about it is actually just a hypocrite. Because you have been on this crusade for a while now about not agreeing with the age of consent. So I really thought you'd be talking about how, oh, this is just like Dr. Disrespect, who you ran hard defense for with this imaginary 17 year old you cooked up in your head based off of one fake email from an anonymous source. And I thought you would be going that angle again, saying like, oh, well, that 13 year old was probably very mature. Age of consent should be maturity. It's not even 18 in most states. Why do you even believe that? It's because in Hollywood, it's 18, so that gets pushed everywhere. Most places succeed. And if you question that, then they call you a pedo. I believe the age of consent is the age of maturity. It should be called the age of marriage. Age of consent implies that you're gonna have to out of wedlock. I think it's better that people Creepy. get married at 16, 17 than to have a bunch of premarital until they're 30 and they're washed up and then they get jaded and they're on birth control and they have dried up eggs. I think that's better for society. He's so pseudo intellectual that he actually argues for things that defend pedophilia. He then also played yeah. a clip where Sneeko was confronted about his view on the age of consent but could not provide a clear answer. We update or not, what do you think the age of consent should be, Sneeko? Yeah, I, this is not an important conversation. No, it's a super important, you don't think kids are not as an important conversation? What do you think the age of consent should be? You wanna be consistent, you don't think anything updates, just tell us what you think it should be. I think it should be past the age, at a developed age, Dustin. At a develop, what is a developed age? If you had to set a law for it, what would you set it? What would you set it about? It's a, it's a developed age. No, answer the question, you fucking pussy. Holy sh! You're such a cowardly. F stand up for what you believe in. If you actually are fucking Muslim, you're actually Islamic or whatever, then stand up for your f beliefs. 
Every other, every other Muslim scholar online will do this. Do it. Stand tall on it. Don't act like a little pussy here trying to grow XQC on, 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 on modern meta ethics or whatever. If you want to answer basic questions about your worldview, what should the age of consent be? Do you see how... You see how you want to answer the question? You see how he's going to yap and not answer the question? I'm going to ask the I same just, thing when you're I done. Go ahead. To, I just answered the question. I just told What you. was the age? Sneeko also DM'd Charlie to explain himself more about his thoughts on the age of consent. People should legally drive and marry at the same age. Is that driver's permit age 15 or driver's license age 16? As Muslims, we believe it's our duty to follow the law of the land. It wasn't a spiritual question. I have no issue with any faith at all. This is a personal belief question that your response didn't answer. I'm happy to discuss this in a call if you're that curious. And that was it. Almost a year and a half later, the second official Sneeko vs. Moist critical debate was established. Charlie retroactively expressed the same sentiments as the first debate, that he thought it would just be a private phone call and not- God damn it, they all look like these dweebs I hated in high school. And I was more popular then. Somewhere in that ballpark? I am not a debater. I've never claimed to be one. I never want to be a debater. I've always said that I believe conversations are the most productive because debates always devolve into what side can score the most points by explaining their thought process, even if the position is wrong. Sneeko began the debate by arguing that there should not be a hard line agreed upon age of consent because everyone matures differently, as well as that we shouldn't let the government define at what age someone is an adult. That's not the point. I'm saying, you're saying that the U.S. defined adult as 18. Well, I'm saying 200 years ago, the age of marriage in America was 10 and the UK was 7. Right? So if the government decides to change it, you're saying it's 18. If the government, maybe if, if Kamala Harris gets elected, the new legal age of an adult is 25. And there could be reasons to say that. They graduated college. They don't leave the house until this age. The brains don't develop until they're 25. Your frontal cortex is not fully developed until you're 25 years old. A lot of people aren't making serious money. They're not able to live independently. A lot of things that you could use to classify an adult don't happen for the new age American until 25 years old. So if Kamala Harris raised it to 25, would you then say that that's the new age? Would you agree with that? I think that'd be totally understandable. Like, right, I think so that's does that, fine. So then does if that you, make, you, so then does that make anybody who sleeps with an under 25 year old, does that now make them a pop? No, I don't think necessarily that makes them a retroactive pedophile. What, so then what's a pedophile? It's an accepted, it's an accepted definition of 18 for a long time. Is not for that long, not for that long, and not, <laughs> for most, and not through most countries across the world. Charlie believes that at 18, there should be a hard line age of consent, so there isn't a gray area for predators to exist in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna animals. do so, MSBT because I, I can't stand not having a fucking damage readout. It's driving me crazy. I need damage numbers. It like I can't get the fucking Blizzard thing to do like the. Uh, I can't get the the blizzard damage readout to work. Uh, really? You need to aggro me the second I did it, really? So stupid. Eight year old who's 364 days. That's a kid? I, yep, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna use very hard set terms. If it is under 18, even if it's 17, 364, that's still a kid. That's a kid. Okay, I, so I, right I, think, now I think it's important to have these hard lines in the sand where it doesn't have this kind of wiggle room. Sneeko then clarifies his definition. You, MSBT you, you is missing. I want the age to be lowered. That's not what I'm talking about at all. That's I, what it comes across as though. When you maybe maybe with the internet are, brain because people are because people in the West, they want to have sex all the time and they have a, a different sort of mindset, right? Here in the Middle East, I'm in the Middle East right now. They want to get married and then have sex. So people, just because I'm saying this does not mean automatically lower, lower. No, 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 that, that's, not, that's not the case at all. We don't have to talk about sex. Do you think it's okay to be marrying a 15 or 16 year old? Probably not, right? I, I would imagine probably not. It depends. So this is where the, the age of consent becomes arbitrary. Ugh. I don't even believe like that. Consent is a, is, a, is a weird thing to even speak about, but it should be, it should be the father. You are a right? fucking so idiot. I don't like girl, it when you speak. I shouldn't even just get consent from her. I should get consent from her parents. She should want to say yes. What? She want to say yes. That's you are a family. fucking and idiot. You are a fucking idiot. Back and forth on this issue for no. 30 minutes straight while neither side was wavering. Yeah. Charlie was firm on his stance that anyone under 18 is a child. Yeah, she doesn't have to give consent. Her parents do. It's it's prima facie at that point. This is the old. It's the old Republican style. Connecting. Good old boy style. 
Women are chattel and all this other stuff. It's disgusting. Or marriage. So Sneeko pivoted to a different question regarding minors. You can take hormone blockers, you can take puberty blockers, okay, when you're a child. When you're 16, you can go change your gender, but you can't get married? Why is that? What, uh, that that's, I, I don't know, I feel like that's a pretty obvious question. No, it's not. There are it's not. See, if you take, if you cut your penis off, text to like Mr. Beast, if you cut your penis off, text to that is a life-altering decision. You can't, you can't glue it back on. You can get divorced if you get married. This is a commitment that you're taking. A child, based off the liberal point of view that you believe in, they can have gender surgery. They can change forever. Do you believe that somebody can go through uh, hormone therapy? Can they change their gender if they're a child? I think that's totally fine as long as everyone is consenting. As you agree with. <laughs> okay, so as long as everyone, your parents, are okay with it, and you are okay with it, I am. I think that's totally a familiar decision to make. Yeah. Okay. Sneeko laughs, and even Charlie laughs because they both realize that Charlie is using the exact same line of thinking that Sneeko used to justify the age of consent. Okay, so. A child can cut their f***s off and take hormone blockers and change their biology forever, but they can't get married? So that's a decision that now extends beyond the family, because now you're bringing in a different party. So if you have someone that's your age coming in saying, I want to marry that child, I, yep, I don't think that can happen under any circumstance. So, you, no. But it's still a personal decision. You're still deciding. It's, it's, it's but still, no, but it's, no, because there's- Take the other party out of the equation. It's a personal it's decision. If I'm, okay, if I'm 16, and I personally want to marry this girl. She's beautiful. She's 21 years old. Her family wants to do it. My family wants to do it. You're saying, I can't do that. We're both consenting. I'm ready to go. I'm physically mature. But I'm not allowed to marry because Moy says that, that woman's a pedophile. But He's right about this, then, which is shitty. The next day shitty. I leave it, I'm depressed. I want to cut my ass off. I can go right into the clinic, snip it off, and start taking HRT like Chris Tyson. That's a society that makes sense to you? It is. I believe yeah, okay. everyone has complete. Yep, I believe everyone has the right Could to complete do with their autonomy. Body what they want to do. Yeah. Okay, but with it, so everyone has the right to do with their body, with the, but not when it comes to a sacred marriage where they have that's kids, one, where they not, add to that's society. That's no longer just you. They can't possibly wrap their head around this adult that has been preying on them. Like I don't know why you can't see that a 16-year-old can't be making this decision on this adult who is convincing them that i am the right choice for you for life right right but but a, a nine-year-old boy can go into a clinic and decide that that doctor that 40 year old doctor could cut my penis off if that's a decision he and his family wants to make <laughs> that doesn't bother me you, okay absolutely oh, okay okay hey maybe a 24 year old watched your streams like oh you know what this 15 year old's pretty mature i'm gonna go ahead and start trying to talk to them do you think that's cool no that's not cool you're supposed to talk to the father before you get married if, if her father's not okay well, with it, that's then what the happen? issue you have with that scenario. Yeah, but when you approach marriage, you don't just go approach a girl, and, and that's that's not what Islamically is allowed. You're supposed to go to the father and supposed to see where it goes from there. So that's so never what I say. Twenty-four year old talks to the father of a fifteen year old and gets his permission. Now it's cool. Get to the father and say like, "May I? Am I interested in marrying your physically mature, your adult daughter?" Okay. Is she okay with it? Your, your, your 15 year old daughter is an adult daughter. Yeah, you hear the weird creepiness in it? No, you're a chomo weirdie. Or you're pushing their ideals, anyways. I don't think you yourself are. But you're pushing the chomo ideal. You are. Listen, if he's okay with it, she's okay with it. I think that's fine. That's fine. If I, if I told you when you were a kid, that I was okay legally and morally to cut your dick off. Would you agree? Like what? What do you mean? Would I like? Would I do it, or would I say that that's okay? Would you say that that's okay? I'd have no idea on how to even process something like that. I'm a fucking child. The full debate was two and a half hours long, but honestly, these clips summarize it pretty well. The clips of the conversation went nuclear viral on Twitter. However, much of the focus seemed to be criticizing Charlie and not Sneeko. People who were against minors transitioning were attacking Charlie for his viewpoint. Many simply called him out for being a fence sitter, or someone who was trying so hard to be middle ground and non-controversial to try and appease everyone. However, some people did say they were both wrong, like when some ordinary gamers responded to Nick Merckx attacking Charlie. Yet enough space in this tweet to include how the other guy believed 15 year olds should get married to 20 something old dudes. Why not mention that? That whole debate was bad takes. Or when XQC said, Well, I mean, if, 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 if I'm your parents, okay, um, well, I mean, you're not gonna have a tattoo 
Ah, uh, before you're 18. You're not gonna have- you're not gonna have it. You're not gonna f***ing fuck shit for life before you're 18. After you're 18, you wanna be a um, whatever. I guess I- I failed as a parent at that point. I feel like I failed as a parent. I failed to show you the correct things for you to do good after 18. <laughs> right? You can hear French Canadian values, and I really love them. I really love French Canadian values, actually. I was raised on them, kind of. Felicity and uh, uh, Avon Avonlea and uh, Anne with an E. And I really love French Canadian values. It's hilarious. You can hear it bleeding out of them. What I can do is live with my choices and feel sad about it, whatever. And it sucks. But I... Definitely will not fucking do all that and enable the whatever before I can. Charlie then went shaking on another shrooms. Live stream where he tried what to is clarify this? Oh, I see shaking shrooms. Okay, saying. never mind. And now I give a perspective on something that immediately gets misconstrued, and I do recognize a lot of it's my fault. I assumed that Sneeko was talking in hyperbole about a nine-year-old getting their dick cut off because I didn't have the assumption that anyone thought that's a, that that is how transitioning works. Nope. There is. Under no circumstances. I don't believe they ever do that. I don't think that. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? I don't believe. I mean, they do that if the child asks them to, or a doctor believes it's right to do so, but they don't offer it as some kind of like. Oh, oh, oh okay. No, no. Okay. You took me to. Oh, wait. Replenish the Rebus Reservoir. No, that's wrong. God damn it. You fucked me up here. It's fine. Just, just release. Maybe I better suit, or I'm sorry, maybe I better corpse run. I, I don't think I can recover my corpse. Yeah, just let your me time. In. I shall aid your journey back to the realm of the living. Yeah, just, just bring me back. It's fine. How's this going? Oh, god damn it. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Okay, stop. I think we're ready to st stay back in business here. And uh, how are we doing here? Yeah, good. I feel like. Theater campaign, chains of domination. Oh. Okay, we're gonna jettison. And then we're gonna open. And then we're gonna take this and put it in that. Yep, whatever. Legality behind a kid saying, I wanna change genders, and then immediately going in and getting their cut off. That doesn't happen. I thought he was just talking in hyperbole. Obviously, no one says that's good. That's not at all what I was saying. I thought he was talking about the overall point of a child transitioning, which is years long process. And you can't even get that in surgery legally until you are 18. Like, I didn't think that that was a literal statement he was making. I did not, and I guess I should have assumed that he was being literal. And that's on me. Many people, Sneeko included, claimed that he fully understood the question, since the debate was two and a half hours long where they discussed the same topic multiple times. He did not misunderstand anything. He's just panicking and is confused since he's never been put in this situation before. Sneeko quickly pressured Charlie to post the debate on his main channel where he felt Charlie lost. You know Moist Critical? 
We did a debate and he hasn't uploaded it. Can you tell him, upload the debate? Yes, upload the debate. Upload it. So upload we know you can upload, upload, upload it. it. Yeah, upload well, it. I want to see the yeah. I think he's afraid. He said he was going to upload it, but he still has it. It's been three days. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? We want to see you. That's why we don't know you because you're not uploading oh. stuff. We know him. But well, we don't know, know you. you. Basically, Sneaker thought Charlie was too scared to expose himself. Then some interesting news would hit social media saying that Charlie has made the decision to leave both the official podcast and Red Thread. He wants to go on an indefinite hiatus to scale back his time spent on the internet. While this post was hiatus. directly talking about his podcasts, many people reported that he was taking a break from the internet entirely, which made Sneeko and many others jump to the conclusions that Charlie could not handle the pressure and making Sneeko look like the winner. And in less than 24 hours, Charlie posted a video called Moist critical situation is crazy, where he clarified and discussed all of the controversy surrounding him in the past week or so, starting with him allegedly quitting the internet. I can't even just peacefully walk away from some projects without it being a massive reaction over actual nothing burger information. Yep. Although Charlie made it seem like he was kind of randomly deciding to step away from these podcasts and maybe it was a coincidence, under the circumstances it did seem like he was stepping away or making the announcement that he was stepping away due to the recent drama. And it's not unreasonable to think that. Charlie spent the rest of this video talking about his debate with Sneeko, more specifically how he felt Sneeko's take on the age of consent is outrageous. Unironically saying a 14 year old adult I think would make most sensible people want to puke. There's so many instances of this and a lot of the conversation was spent with him talking about like overseas age of consent like talking about how Japan's age of consent was 13 for the longest time this and that uh, but the whole thing was like pulling teeth and it was painful and I think it's extremely alarming perspective to have. Unironically calling a 14 year old and 12 year old mature enough for a marriage those are middle schoolers. Like, holy sh**. I think that is extremely concerning to be advocating for something like that. Like, would Sneeko be okay if his best friend ended up marrying a 14-year-old? Uh, he sh certainly shouldn't be. No one should be okay with something like that. Like, that's terrible. That is actually terrible. It wasn't until after Charlie posted his video was there an uptick in people defending him on Twitter. Now there were more viral tweets saying that Sneeko was the one with the concerning opinions and Charlie was receiving unfair criticism. Charlie then discusses how he thought Sneeko was speaking in hyperbole when referring to gender reassignment surgery. I thought he was talking surgery. in hyperbole. I thought he was just exaggerating, being over the top, talking about the entire subject of transitioning. Oh I had my no God. idea that any living, breathing human being actually thought that that's how transitioning works. <laughs> you just go into a shop shop. Saying, Nine-year-old, chop chop. Lay you down on the operating table and just snip your whole fucking meat off. Now, gender reassignment surgery for minors is very uncommon, especially the cutting your penis off one. Changing genders is a long process. It's slow, thought out, typically over the course of years while consulting with multiple medical professionals. Now, are there cases where minors do get surgery? Yes. Reuters reported the number of minors who received a mastectomy, which is the removal of breasts, otherwise known as top surgery, averages around 260 minors per year. Also, transitioning from female to male is much more common. Adolescents assigned female at birth initiate transgender care 2.5 to 7.1 times more frequently than those assigned male at birth. But Charlie assumed that Sneeko was talking about gender-affirming care... Ye you know, I believe I've caught up to uh, World of Warcraft uh, about 10 days early. I figured they'd have me do like a whole long quest chain, but no, I, I actually believe I have finished early. And I think I'm going to finish this expansion early too in like three or four days. And they don't make enough content for me, kind of. I, I don't think, I, mean, I can go through all these stupid quests, but I mean, all it's going to do, I'm already rich. I mean, I'm rich by my standards for what I need to do. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm already feeling burnt out on, wow. It's weird. I want like a sandbox to play, but, it, but, it, but there's not enough of them. I could, I could do mortal, I suppose I could do mortal, I guess. I could play Mortal Main, but it takes forever 
forever. I don't know. I don't know what game to play. I need I need a sandbox, but I don't have one. I need another sandbox that I can main with these other two games. Wow is good when the content's fresh, but it's not good when it's not. Uh, I've pretty much capped like right here. I could do all the rest of these, I suppose, but it, like I don't know. Like what other what other uh dragonflight quests do I need to do? In Tears Footsteps. I did that one today. I guess there's a whole bunch of quests in Valdraken that I'm supposed to just chain. I don't like that one. Can we go do that? Will you lead me to, to that? I don't think you will. No, I want to take that one away. Reach middle, reach middle of Grove of Awakening. Now, I want to see anything. Can I? Oh, no. Yeah. I, um, broken Isles. No, I want. Um, Dragon Isles. And I want to do. See, that's no good. Uh, there's lots of Dragon Isles stuff to do. There's dragon glyphs up there in the Forbidden Reach, which I haven't even really been to. But it's all wind down stuff. It's kind of boring to me. And I'm kind of bored of it again. And I've, I think I better maybe get off this game. Which is fine. It was good to visit for three days or something. One of which I got harassed by a rando. And it just, it's kind of like, I don't know, it feels kind of like toxic. I think I'll probably just come back in like 10 days. I've done what I needed to do. I caught my character up. I, I'm here at the crossroads. I can do all this meaningless crap that I really don't care about. And just keep grinding and live on this game. And I could do that. But the game's not fresh enough for me in that respect. And I could start a new character or level my monk, I guess. But I don't really want to stay on this game. I will be honest about it right now. I don't really want to stay on this game. I don't want to give the people the impression that I'm going to be playing WoW forever. I am not. I don't really want to be on this game. I'll be honest about this right now. Oops. Now, I loaded all my stuff, but you didn't load the right tabs? You didn't load the right tabs. Oh, no. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, you did. You're just not loaded. There you go. So, okay, uh, right now I'm probably not public on YouTube and I need to be there. I'm live on Twitch, which is good. Live on Twitch. There we go. I, I lost my connection, which which I lost my, my viewership, which is kind of shitty. That's all right. You, know, you can't win them all. Do, 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 do. I want you to come over here to this and... Uh, Get out. Okay, so okay, there is my tablet and my monitor. I must come to this and change it. Change it. I believe I will go on uh, Rust. I guess. Bro, yeah, I'm not really feeling like mortal. I'm not. So I'm just going to go on rust, I think, yeah, for the moment. It's kind of weird. Rust. Uh, rust. Uh, or I could do Valheim as an option. Doing Eve and I'm doing well. 
I could buy my scroll of refresh now, you know. Uh, but yeah, I could work on some FFXI. I like the vein demo, but it wasn't finished. It wasn't totally what I was looking for, unfortunately. There's other stuff like Once Human is on my D drive. I like Once Human. Um, I still haven't done. I have Gothic three, but that's not that's not right for an MMO. I'm looking for an MMO, and there's almost none. You know, seven days to die. No, I believe I'll get on Rust, I guess. I'll just do some Rust. I'll take a look at what the servers look like. It's a it's a Tuesday, which isn't too good for timing, but, you know. Eh. And I will change my titles. We will go from WoW pre-patch TT dubs to Rust, FFXI, and Eve. Rust, FFXI, and Eve. There we are. And there we are. I caught up so fast. It took like three days and I was done and it got boring. It's so quick. It's funny. They don't make enough games. It's fucking annoying to me. Like really genuinely annoying. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps I go back to hunting for sandbox, I guess. Oh, this is a different, this is a different like batch of tabs, which is stupid. There. Okay, get them. We will take a look. The tool cupboard. Unlock the skin by purchasing shop by Rust server hosting. Shop by Rust server hosting. Anyways, I wish to look for solo. And there is a weekly North America tutorial for solos. That's a tutorial experience. That's interesting. Ice Fuse, which is not sorting correctly. Rage Rust, 2x Solo, Reverse Rust, Dream Rust, EU, RU. I skipped over it automatically. Um, cargo container. We're going to jettison. Oops, no. Going to jettison. <coughs> and now we take the old and put in the new, and now we don't have really have a timer going. And now we got eighteen million again. Um, I want to look under stuff for RPG and just see what's available in the modded. There's 32 servers and only one of them is popular. That's a European Max X3, X5, X10 TP remove, but it's a Russian server. And it's the only one in the world that's doing well with an RPG system. It doesn't really matter if it's actually good but i mean i mean with yeah i mean that that service full i won't have an amazing ping i really would prefer that it wasn't uh yeah like i, I would i would prefer north america no okay it gives you an idea well yep and all the rest of these are like really foreign servers my scene is almost entirely foreign and I didn't know. There's one that's no, no, it's a it's Russian. 
There's one with one player on it. Nomad's Nook. 2x PvE RPG prestige system and events. But well, let's do. There are customary Rust Rust ser servers. I like uh, I like my my hardcore zombie server, and I could go there, but I I would prefer to do some some form of PvP today. Burn Zombie Land has sixty people, and it's got a it's a bi weekly PvE role play. Designer server from the player for the player. Five hundred rateable bases, starter kits, custom maps, tons of events, active admins, QOL plugins, economic system, and shop system. Uh, water bases, cooking 2.0, craft buff food, join PvP raid island, items with perks in slash shop, checklist, shop and stock market, about 500 rateable bases, zombies, check system quest, gamble cases this is a popular server this russian server is really popular tp and friends rust sakura it's a zombie server maybe i should try that one but i don't know rusty spoon us pve has zombies No kill, no raid. Raid base quest. It's all burn zombie land. That's uh, extended industrial water bases. Skill your, skill your character and level up to 300. That's the burn zombie land. Burn zombie land. Zombie land skyfall. 59 out of 100. Yeah. QOL water bases. Cooking 2.0 craft food and all that stuff. Zombie hell zombie hell it's a 5x pve server 5x is okay but i don't think it's There's five people on my server, which is good. Yeah, I guess I'll just pop on that one. I know which one I want to be on. It's just, you know, eh, well. <coughs> oh, I wasn't mining. Oops. Shit. There we go. As a whole, and was just using the snip your off as shock value to simplify this process. Gender affirming care encompasses a range of social, psychological, behavioral, and medical interventions designed to support and affirm an individual's gender identity when it conflicts with the gender they were assigned at birth. So anything from talking to a psychologist to maybe running some tests to taking hormones and puberty blockers all count as gender affirming care. And this care is illegal in these 24 states. While many people think that transphobia is simply the reason why it's illegal, and there are definitely lawmakers who have made it clear that is the reason why, there is also just not a ton of research or information about the short-term and long-term effects of transitioning. Puberty blockers and sex hormones do not have FDA approval for children's gender care. No clinical trials have established their safety for such off-label use, and in 2016, the FDA ordered makers of puberty blockers to add a warning about psychiatric problems to the drug's label after the agency received several reports of ending thoughts in children who were taking them. More broadly, no large-scale studies have tracked people who receive gender-related medical care as children to determine how many remained satisfied with their treatment as they aged and how many eventually regretted transitioning. The same lack of clarity holds true for the contentious issue of detransitioning, when a patient stops or reverses the transition process. One overarching reality about the Sneeko vs. Penguin's beef is that we put an insurmountable amount of pressure on YouTubers and celebrities to speak about social issues that they clearly are uneducated on. Instead of putting the pressure on politicians and experts who actually could progress the conversation further, then again we know a lot of these experts and politicians hide behind criticism. They often
often refuse to answer the important questions, and when people come up with their interpretations of their lack of clarity, then it's considered a conspiracy theory. Maybe YouTubers are doing the right thing by talking about these issues, even though there is no doubt that this is somewhat of a business decision to discuss these things. Generally speaking, these topics receive more views, which then means more ads and more money. And if they want the benefits of speaking on the issues when oh, it's shit. easy, then they should be able to take the criticism for when yeah, it's hard. On because his base. of this whole firestorm, Charlie announced that he is slowing down on talking about drama. It hasn't been as fun recently. It hasn't. Oh, shit. And the main Wait. thing, if you've been around the channel for a while, is I've always wanted this to be... 24, and okay. never feel like a job. And as hard as it is for me to admit this, a lot of this kind of stuff, it has just started to feel like less fun and more of, well, gotta do this because I'm expected to. Like, anytime I go live, most of chat is just telling me about the latest in whatever's happening in the creator space or some other, like, extremely negative thing going on. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to learn all about that once I turn stream off, so then I spend a few hours learning about these things, and it's all just really upsetting stuff. Like, it's not... Happy. It's all very sad, bad stuff. Sneeko, on the other hand, will not be slowing down. His message remains the same, and he respects Charlie for having the conversation in the first place. Critical. Nope, I know I don't want to play. Uh, I know I don't. Him, for even being willing to have that conversation, it takes balls to do it. You know how many people are going to be willing to have a conversation Unfortunately. like that? Not many. Not many YouTubers, and he's probably the biggest YouTube commentator in the world. I've personally done more research on this. I'm just going to drop to that. Have, That's just fun. to get a good perspective on both sides, which I would say is a net positive overall. Because at the end of the day, it is your decision to determine how you feel about any issue. But if you did not do your own research, then can you really say it's your opinion? Welcome back to the Papa Meat channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down because today we're talking about dangerous jobs. The dangerous job we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, is being an employee at Waffle House. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Waffle House, let me give you an idea. Let me let me paint you a picture. Maybe it's 9 p.m. Everywhere else is closed. All the you know, you're like hey, Waffle we House. Chili's, right? We have to go to some place where. Oh, the Waffle house. house. Lame. It's a southern Midwest restaurant chain that is open 24 hours a day that primarily sells breakfast items. Doesn't seem all that dangerous, but for some reason, America has cultivated it as the official stomping ground of for the, the uh, crazy why. people. It's been dedicated as the primal pit, but it has. It did always start that way in fact actually it was founded in 1955 by joe roger senior and tom forkner in georgia with the vision of creating a fast food restaurant with table service in a friendly atmosphere boy oh boy did they really they missed the mark on that one <laughs> ironically enough they ended up making dare i say the most dangerous restaurant in america sure there's brawls and like mcdonald's and stuff and fast food chains because there's a billion of them out there while waffle house only has 2,000 locations it is small enough to feel claustrophobic but it's big enough to really rustle and tussle it's the perfect arena size you go to mcdonald's to film prank videos you go to waffle house to draw blood that's the delineation Fuck around and find out at a waffle house is what they say and luckily ladies and gentlemen we have a little tip from the inside we've been leaked videos of how they indoctrinate these gladiators these warriors to be able to withstand the onslaught that waits them First one up, Waffle House training, the pull, drop, mark, order, calling method. My objective here is to get you guys feeling like you could do this job. So let's see what we can do here. I want to say the music is extremely deceptive to how the actual experience is going to go working at a Waffle House. I've never been in a Waffle House, no matter what time of day, where it has ever felt this calm and peaceful before. Never. Not once. Even when I was a child and I'd go in there with my grandparents, the aura that Waffle House has cannot be matched by any other restaurant. I don't know why that is. It just is. Wait! Today's video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX is on a mission to get people to break up with boring browsers. With Opera GX, you have access to customization that you simply cannot get anywhere else. Their GX mods allow you to transform your browsing and performance experience. And you can even add bathing capybaras to your desktop. Cute little rats. Or turn the soothing sounds of heavy rain on the background when you're just browsing. Maybe you want to hear the sound of lead pipes falling whenever you type. All of this and more can be achieved with mods offered on Opera GX. Now here's everything Opera GX mods can do. They can play background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing tab sounds, theme and 
colors of the browsers, mods dedicated wallpaper, disabling and enabling mods and individual modifications in the mods menu available from the sidebar. And you can even visit the GX store, which shows the wide range of mods available to explore and create. Upper GX now has AI powered tools such as AI prompts, Chat GPT, and Chat Sonic. Use smart AI prompts to summarize articles or find related content about a topic so you have more time to play games and enjoy surfing the web. Wow. Plus, Chat GPT is one click away in the sidebar. Upper GX is also equipped with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all of your settings from your previous browsers to Upper GX, like browsing history, bookmarks, and even cookies. It's also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. So it's time to change things up. Use my link below to download Upper GX today. Or click the link in the description and pinned comment to start crafting your ideal browsing experience right now. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring the video and back to the video. Hello, my name is Greg Hall. Today we're going to discuss the pull drop mark calling system. Greg Hall's been to the ringer. I want to say Greg Hall maybe had a couple drinks before this and they're like, God damn it, Greg, and he had to comb his hair. Come on, Greg. And he's like, what? I'm just, it's what? I'm the area vice president. What does that mean? Area vice president? The pull, the drop, and the mark. Look at Greg smile at the end of this. By the end, he says, pull, drop, mark. Come look at this real quick. <laughs> you pull the pussy, you drop the pussy, then you mark the pussy. They're like, Greg! Cut it, cut it. <laughs> pull one quarter. The pull refers to the number. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> pull one quarter. Pull one quarter. That's deceptive, too. It's never that. It's always just like, pull one quarter. It doesn't matter. There could be two people in the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, pull, pull one quarter. <laughs> 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 it's true. That's how the restaurants are. It's true. Pull one quarter. Pull one quarter. Being nice. No. The pull refers to the number. <laughs> pull one quarter. Pull one quarter. Pull one quarter. That's deceptive too. That's deceptive too. It's never that. It's always just it's like. Never just pull like one <laughs> There could be two people in the restaurant. Yeah, pull. yeah fucking pull one quarter. Pull one quarter. Pull one quarter. <laughs> That's the fucking thing you get in a Waffle House. Not the pull uh -huh. one quarter. Pull one quarter. <laughs> the pull refers to the number and type of meats to be cooked. Pull one bacon, for example. Would pull one bacon. Pull three strips of bacon from the refrigerator and place it on the grill. Pull one bacon equals pull three strips of bacon. So now they're getting, now they're getting into their own math. You're going to really see how our Oh, game no. Whatever these things actually. Oh no. Refer to the number of orders to be cooked and not necessarily the number of pieces of meat. While you pull one T bone when pull one T bone is called, you would pull two pieces of pork chop when pull one pork chop is called because one order of pork chops is actually two chops. <laughs> What, yeah, one one is one equals three, what, what's two. About two is one. This doesn't just mean three across the board. One represents different numerical values <laughs> given the pieces of meat. Like there's no way that that can actually like help you save time. All right, he said pull two, so was pork chops. <laughs> Dude, that's three is six. Three. It's 14, it's 21, 21. 21. I think it's 21. Prepared, does not need to be called in at this time. <laughs> rare or medium rare. If you go to a Waffle House and you order a medium rare, you're like, what the f***? Like, why? Can why? You medium rare from your sweetheart, that why do you got on the, on the grill? Can you barely cook frozen, it? Can you barely cook it? Steak that you can probably have had in the bottom of the fridge yeah. for however long. Can you make sure that that thing is just barely pink? Barely pink. This is yeah, fucking disgusting. This is really why I want I'm like, well done. Well done. Or medium. I don't know. to get on this video was the magic marker system. I cannot stress enough how, how archaic this system is. Greg, take it away. As the salesperson calls in the order, it is your job to begin placing markers on the plates using the special codes that Waffle House has designed to help you remember exactly how everything is to be prepared. Greg even looks disgusted by this process too. Greg, Greg does not look happy that he has to be talking about this. The magic marker system is they use Waffle House plates, various condiments and toppings to show what the order is the person will tell you the order and the person will dress their plate for the order not give them the ticket that you write on you, dr you dress the plate <laughs> to understand how this order <laughs> 
does not look happy that he has to be talking about this. The magic <laughs> the is they use Waffle House plates, various condiments, oh, and no. toppings to show Look how confusing that is. The person will oh, no. Order, and the person will this is probably, like, some people's, order. like, ulcers. <laughs> some people in the country probably have ulcers because of this. Oh, God. Ticket that you ride on, you order. If a toast is plain, they have little signatures of how you're supposed to orient stuff on the plate to remind yourself, oh, there's no butter on this. Not read a ticket because I guess they're, are, are, you, are they under the impression that the people that are working here cannot read? That's what it's for, yeah. It's for people who can't read or write. So can this oh not be my a God. for that probably small amount of people? I mean, to insinuate that they're like, we should just make this whole system because there's no way it's going to be right that is working here. That feels insulting. I mean, imagine walking into Waffle House and you're like, you're in the back. All right, so go ahead and cook me this order. And the guy like looks down. It's a slice of cheese with a couple of pack of mayo. Uh, what am I looking at here? He's like, this is a turkey club. Are you sure you are supposed to work here? We call the system magic because our customers often do not notice the markers on the plate and think you have memorized all of the orders that were being called in. I like how it's like a weird, it's supposed to be like you flexing on the people. Now the people are going to be very impressed that you were able to remember scrambled eggs, hash browns, and bacon. But in fact, you duped them. You've dressed a plate. You have it marked down so you can remember because your brain does not work that well. <laughs> <laughs> Simply place a right side up jelly pack. God damn it. Position of the plate. The God damn it. Two eggs, what if I don't want to? What if I want to put the honey there? What if I want to put the fucking smuckers, whatever that thing is, apricot jam there? What if I want to put the apricot jam there? What if the ketchup and mustard, like, are going up and down? I think the up and down of the ketchup and mustard is much better in that oval corner than this box. Do you understand? The box in the bottom of the plate angers me, and I don't want, I don't want you to be my boss anymore anymore i quit this shitty job i fucked your wife and i stole all the bacon and uh plate mark like this the, customer the ketchup and the get i'm sorry the ketchup and the fucking or whatever the ketchup like just suck my balls boss you're not my fucking boss fuck you boss i fucked your wife suck my balls present them fast one welch's packet of grape jelly one welch's pack of grape jelly up my butthole and then some mustard for good measure maybe my thumb but only on thursdays on thursdays we have thumb thursdays it's grape jelly and thumbs up me bum it's the waffle house way that's why we're so surly Every Thursday, Surly Thursday, where we stick our, th our fucking, we get some grape jelly and stick it up our goddamn bum, you know, the wrong way, as we stick it in the plate correctly. Vertically at the P place the place the grape very carefully up your fucking ass, boss. Take this fucking job and shove it. The plate means two scrambled eggs. That's how we know. Take this grape, <laughs> take this grape jelly and very carefully place it in your fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You can see why I didn't do so well. Oh, that. With, uh, with <laughs> the minute you try to tell me to do something stupid like this, I'm like, ah, I'll make it look good. I mean, is that your problem? Do you, do you, need, to look, do you need me to make the, look, the, the food look good and appetizable? I can do that. Put in the grape at the bottom of the plate. Yeah, you can uh, you can very carefully take that grape jelly and stick it at the bottom of your ass. If the customer would rather have hash browns, you simply add a few shreds of hash browns. Simply the add a few shreds of a hash brown to your butthole and shut the fuck up. <laughs> this fucking you're 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 kind of uppity, boss. Shut the fuck up, boss. I'm not listening to you anymore. You're too bossy. God damn it. This is why I don't have a boss. It's because they make you put the grape jelly at the bottom of the goddamn plate. So they can satisfy their own weird fucking ritualistic fucking jack off fucking thing. And I just don't. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm just. I'm not really too down with it. We can all admit that this is a living joke, can't we? We're all working for minimum wage at the bagel shop. And you, you want to take your grape jelly and shove it up your fucking ass sideways, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs>
<laughs> and the boss isn't even real. Imagine if the boss was real, how angry and hostile I would get. Now, I'm not an angry and hostile person, actually, in the workplace. I'm actually not, believe it or not. I am when I have the room to myself and I can be my own goddamn talk show host. <laughs> But I, I, I don't have it when it comes to other people. Then I'm just quiet. Like the other day, I accidentally whispered this dude that I just blocked and called him an asshole. Being like, God damn it, I should have been quiet and not said anything. I'm sorry. And he was like, I, please don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. And I was like, yeah, I don't blame you. Have a nice day, buddy. I'm sorry I called you nasty. I'm sorry about calling you nasty names. I wasn't sorry about what I, what I said, but I was like, and I, I left. And that, that's an example of what can happen with me to, with me uh, when I'm dealing with muggles on a video game. Right. I can't even imagine. I can't, I can't imagine because I just not subjected myself to it. I have not subjected myself to muggles in, in 13, no longer than that shit. No, no, it's been, yeah, it's been, um, yeah, it's been 14 years. It's been 14 years since I had a job with, with muggles beyond, uh, working flagging at a construction site. Well, uh, for, sorry for, for day labor. For, I worked with a bunch of muggles when I worked day labor, but I don't mind that. I'm used to that. I did that all my life. Right. And that was in 2020, uh, 2020. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. 20, uh, yeah. 2020, I think was the last time I did that was like four years ago. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, I like that, but I also don't, and I really hate it. <laughs> so, so sort of, you know, I need the money and I think it's a really good opportunity being able to go flag traffic for a little bit more money and do it, you know, but I also really dislike it because I'm better than that. And I, and, and, um, that was the last time I had a boss. And, and if you recall, you leave the, you leave the, the, I don't know if you ever work for a day labor place, but you leave the day labor place on the bus with like a stop sign and your homies. And then you go on down to the fucking, you know, your homies being like the dudes that are doing the same job for you so they can score fucking heroin or methamphetamine or whatever the fucking play is. Probably alcohol most of the time. But like, you know, they, they need money for a bottle that evening and they know that they don't have it. And so they're there that they, they show up at 530 in the morning. They work until like, you know, 430 in the afternoon. So they have a bottle that evening and maybe a meal. Right. That's about what good day labor is for, in my opinion. It gets you about a bottle and a meal, <laughs> a bottle and a meal, maybe a sack i wouldn't say it's really good for like paying the bills <laughs> unless you do it every day for a month in which case it does sort of add up actually it does add up to like you know 2100 dollars or something like that but that still won't pay the bills or pay rent that won't even get you that that won't even get you uh fucking you know like a day labor job for 30 days straight and i've done it before a bunch of times like four times something uh, I would say that was still won't even get you a home or, or anything at all in this country nowadays. That won't get you anything at all. You can work solid 30 days at 12 to 15, sometimes 20 bucks an hour. It still won't get you into an apartment. You won't have all of the stuff. You won't have, uh, the deposit. You won't have the first and the last month's rent. You won't have, you'll have $3,000, whatever you have, like two to $3,000, but you won't have anything. You won't have rent or a place to live or anything like that. You'll have like maybe at best an extended stay. And then you got to live in the extended stay because the minute that you have to pay rent and, uh, first and last month and deposit, that's like three to nowadays it's more than that. It's like three to five thousand dollars or something like that. Who the fuck has three to five thousand dollars? You're not gonna have that if you live if you're living in the extended stay, you're probably gonna be drugged out and drinking or something like that. You're not gonna have you're not gonna have three thousand dollars in the extended stay. Somebody will probably rob you if you do that. Nobody in the extended stay has three thousand dollars lying around. I really did even when even on our best day, I think the best day we ever did as the stripper or taxi driver uh, couple was like seven fifty or something like that after the dope and the food and the gas and the time and the fucking you know problems. It was like maybe seven fifty sitting in her pocket because she's a stripper. You know, everything I got I spent and. You know, so that's fine, but it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just sort of interesting. And it gives you, it gives you like, like kind of an example of how hard it can be to literally pull yourself to your fucking, like off the fucking streets in this country. You have to like have $5,000 cash. 
It's actually literally like that. You're going to be out you're you're going to need the bus pass which is like what expensive. It's either 750 a day or it's the month for for whatever it is like 80 bucks or something like that. You're going to need transportation, you're going to need like Uber or a monthly Uber pass or something like that. You're going to need the monthly at the motel to get up so you can work to get the month's worth of money which is going to be like 2200 of the 3 grand. You're going to have 800 left over and then you maybe can continue to pay for like sixty dollars a like a day or something like that in a mo in a motel, but trying to get up is impossible. By the time the month ends, you've already paid for the current place that you're living at. And that's why people live with their parents and shit like that. In all the generations. Now people are living with their family and their parents and they're taking like for, for instance, I bought my place, I own my place, but I pay rent because I live on land. And nobody tells me what to do. Nobody tells me I can't drink or smoke weed. Nobody tells me, I mean, I like honestly don't have a landlord. I've got loving family who understand my problems and know every single thing there is to know about me. I have no secrets or anything like that. I don't have bad credit. I, mean, I, have, I have bad credit, but I, I don't have a history of like hurting my credit or being like a, like a bad renter or anything like that. I really don't. I've only had like one, one or two evictions, I think, in, in 30 years. It was just that, you know, I was broke. You know, if, if it did happen, I was broke, you know. And so they know that I'll just give them whatever I have that's spare. And, and in return, I have complete autonomy. I can fucking stay up till, you know, I can stay up for 18 hours straight. I've done it on stream many times before. I'll stay up till like, eight, you know, stay up 18 hours straight or something like that. Playing fucking video games, pounding fucking liquor or something like that. Smoking hash, fucking around like a fucking 16-year-old boy or something like that. 20-year-old boy. And like, you know, and watching fucking YouTube, fucking Papa Meat and shit like this. Basically watching the equivalent of a, of a more classy version of TikTok. And the other reason I bring this up is, is it's just like, I pay for the autonomy to be able to do that. Pretty much all my money. I make nine grand a year. It all goes out to the rent, the food, the upkeep and keeping this all running. The use of a car, you know, the 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 light bill the power bill the propane bill is five hundred dollars a year there's all this stuff and, and that's where all of my money goes and i feel no shame about that but understand if you're on the streets that's the money that you need you need three to five fucking grand to get like off that and, and it took me a long time it took me four years of striving and drug dealing and pushing and slinging and fucking driving taxi it took me longer than that to drive taxi but by the time i was not driving taxi anymore i was doing hustling and all types of shit like working for you know working for day labor flagging traffic and all the stuff i could do to reach this reality that you look at today and i'm not saying i'm not bragging about this or anything like that or and i'm not saying that it was easy i'm saying that, that that like i couldn't handle a boss again i told them i was like i i hit this terrible place at the end like right at the end it was like i don't know five months before i'd been in the madhouse and, and, and they told me 24 months they were like 24 months in a rehab and you'll be out of you'll be out of the system like they promised me in the drug court you know they or not the drug court but the uh you know the denver fucking da promised me he was like if you do two years in the in the halfway house and prove that you're you're clean the entire time and drop drop drug tests and stuff we'll let the probation violation go we'll see that you we see that you haven't done anything in 17 years and we're going to give you the you know we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt but you have to be perfect and you have to show us that you're actually addressing your problems and and you know if you're not working you have to be seeking a disability claim or something like that and i was like okay and we did this and in the time that happened i did get my disability claim it took and, and 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 i remember it was like 16 months into the 24 month bid and to me it was a bid i was trapped there i could easily walk out and go to my friends or go to my people go get high if i wanted to and i did so a couple of times i did relapse a couple of times it sucked and, and and like you know and but i didn't do it a lot and i stayed sober and i actually took a friend for like 14 months of that we just played tarkov and and fucking you know rest and shit like that and, and games fallout 76 and and it was it was a great time but it was also prison and i did get out of the system because of it and paid my debts to, to, to society and in the time being i like retired my business i i i applied for pandemic on assistance relief and because i've been a gig worker on and off for 16 years or and or a taxi driver a full-blown taxi driver for 13 years and a gig worker for three more like five really uh 
it, like they were like well you're an american who works i have i have a tax record and they love me i pay my taxes I always have and you know and they, they're like well you're an american who works that's very rare you're in a, you're like a working functioning drug addict and i'm like yep i'm a working functioning drug addict that's exactly right i like my methamphetamine and i like working I always have and uh i don't like working i just like being productive and there's a difference if i'm not if i'm and, and honestly productive to me is chasing my life stream of, of of making my living being a video game player it's not productive to flag traffic or sling dope or fucking run with strippers and live in motels and shit like that I, I, it's not productive or be a drug dealer it's just not it's not fucking you know it's not productive for me to chase the dream that isn't mine it was other people's dream. Like I chased my friend M's dream and we reached it for a while. We were pushing like five to 700 a night, you know, two to 300 of it was dope. Two to 300 of it, of it was a motel room and food and transportation and money and her beauty products and stuff. And then the rest of it was in her pocket, which she would spend on dope on a rainy, on a rainy day. And, you know, and we lived like that for two years and seven months. And I remember it, but I understood that even with stripper and taxi money, you can't really dig your way off the streets. You need a home. The, the, the country needs to help you with, 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 with a place that you can get three square meals a day without it breaking your fucking piggy bank. You, a, a place to sleep. Now, what was that sound? What was that sound? I don't know. It's scaring me, though. Is this somebody about to kill me? No. I think I'm fine. Oh, I'm so heavy I can't even move. Well, let's go dump this wood away and sell it when it's 10,000 and I'll make 300 more gold again. So, and and now, like, you know, it's so, it, I, wa I watched what it took and I was like, yeah, you know... Like, it doesn't matter if you work all 30 days of the, of the fucking month at a, at a $12 an hour job and, and make like, you know, 120 bucks a day and, and, and you make three grand. I did that several times. You get up to three grand and you're like, okay, I'd like to get an apartment now, please. And they're like, okay, well, that'll be the first in the month. Left. It'll be a credit check that you're going to fail. And then the first in the last month's rent, even if you do pass the credit check or even if we do take you on without the, the credit, uh, you know, you're going to have to hand us something like $4,700. And when you're done you're going to have to pay rent in two months. And on top of that, and that's going to be, you know, that's going to be $2,000 or something like that. Two months of rent is going to be at least $2,000, if not three to $4,000. And you look at it and you're like, oh my God, I have to slap down five grand or the, you know, it's like three to five grand. Back then it was three, but now it's like five. Like, but you know, like I've got to slap down three grand and then work like a goddamn dog for two months to, 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 to fucking slap the other two grand together. And if you don't have something like somebody making real money, like a drug dealer or a stripper or somebody, who's just making real money on the fucking side actually actual real money you can't fucking reach it not with 12 dollars an hour you can't reach it the american dream is dead it's been dead for since 2017 something like that the american dream died i don't mean to talk shit or something like that like somebody's giving up on it i'm not i'm just saying the american dream died well you can't even buy your way out of a, out of being homeless with five grand why would you bother trying it's an easy it's an easy you know it's an easy concept like, there's no reason to try. These homeless people are not faulty for not trying. Like, honestly, like, you still can't even dig your way out of the problem with the inflation so high. You can't even the rent so high. You can't dig your way out of the problem with bank robber money. There was a guy who I remember hearing about. He he, he ranks he robbed some 56 banks or something like that. Spent it all on crack cocaine and stuff. And it didn't matter what he did. He couldn't get his he head above poverty line. He was robbing banks and he couldn't get his head above the poverty line. He was still in the goddamn lower class. It didn't matter because he would take these long periods in between. But he, but he still fucking robbed 56 banks. And he couldn't get ahead in the fucking lower class. The money didn't matter. Like the, the influx was nice. But by the time he robbed the next bank, all that other money was gone to try to solve other people. People's in, in his life's problems and his crack addiction and all this other stuff. He's a very famous bank robber and I forget the name, but you know, it was an interesting story. I remember, I remember doing a deep dive on it a couple of years ago. Like this guy who robbed banks for a living. Cause I was like, do bank robbers actually get ahead when they rob banks? And the answer was no, no. That's one of the reasons why the successful ones always come back. They always come back and keep doing it because it because it's never enough money. Even that three to five grand stripper fucking drug money or whatever, or, or, or taxi driver money. It's, it's nice money and i've seen it a lot in my life you know a lot of money a lot of clothes a lot of luggage but i i i, I that's, when you're putting in work that's how it goes but i mean like you know it it's still not really like you know it's still not really feasible when it comes down to it when it comes to paying the people you don't make it i mean you don't make it 
even with the nice stripper money or the drug dealer money you don't make it it doesn't matter you have to have concrete like two or three people working to hustle to get like five legibly something like two to five grand on a table every month that's why gangs are so fucking popular is because they put five grand on the table for anybody willing to fucking like willing to fucking back them and their in their stuff so that they can you know they can make sure that people can eat that's why gangs are out of control and I don't really blame them, honestly. We don't gang for each other in America anymore. We used to kind of gang for each other. Like, the lower class would gang for each other. They'd do, do soup lines to make sure every motherfucker had a place to sleep and a place to eat. And there was, like, you know, every there was there was places at the inn. And, and you could always find a shelter or something like that. Now it's doggy dog. And because you don't work, you're considered to be a shithead. But honestly, before you can even work, you have to come up with five grand to get a bed under your fucking, under your head. And who the fuck has that? Your parents don't have five grand funny money to just try and take a swing at getting an apartment. They, like, why Why would these people on the streets? I mean, it's sickening. The prices have gotten disgusting. If the prices were better, if it was like 1200 bucks to get somebody off the street and into an apartment with a, work, with a workable car, they would go to work. And they would start taking three showers a day and they would kick the fucking habit. Trust me, it's, this is how this works. If you enable the people to fucking enable themselves and you surround them with other people who have faced the same problems, and they get support from their community and Friday nights they don't go shooting uh, shooting dope down at the dope house they go downstairs and they play Wii tennis with their fucking friends who have all been dope addicts before and we, and we know we know in the scene the doctors have told us the nurses know uh, so you know uh, uh, Neil Sampat proved that that that, uh, that uh, support from other drug addicts is what actually cures drug addiction it's, it's not fucking jail it's not reform it's not making the drugs illegal or trying to ban it or, or, or trying to block them from getting it it, that just causes cartels which leads to cias and problems i mean we got bad bad problems and so now like we, we need like to understand that, that, that the, the drugs are everywhere you can't stop it you know it's just stupid it's kind of like the border like mexicans are everywhere you can't stop it and i don't mind it honestly i think it's fine we just need it some form of like being careful and respectful that's all we just need the average amount of, of policy and politeness that we do for everything else in america from the dmv to the fucking you know with the same same politeness and same understanding of same service and same caring out looking individuals that are in the police the fucking the paramedics the fire you know the the doctors the medics everybody like everybody who helped build this country and make it what it was they have a place here i don't care if they fall into the streets and become a drug addict and, so, and stole stuff from stores to get by i don't care about that the reason that they're doing that is because it takes more than three to five grand to, to, to pull your fucking to pull yourself out up by your bootstraps i know because it took federal aid for me to do it i saved up three thousand seven hundred dollars and i still had to take like 40 some odd 40 some odd back uh retro pay for for disability on Asperger's and the government themselves told me that they felt that they should have retrograde paid me since since um uh since since uh like since the Asperger's became a diagnosis but but they couldn't they did it as far back as they could which was the first time that I applied to disability and they worked with me and the lawyers won with that one too and the court was sympathetic and they wanted to help me it was crazy they took a look at my case and they were like we're gonna help you and we're gonna help you with this but one thing they couldn't do is they couldn't retro pay all of my life or I would have been able to solve all of the problems in my life i was only able to receive five 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 years of retro pay and i used it to buy this home i mean I, and I, as it was i used the 1700 that i had left and i and the rest of it was all like you know and the rest of it was all you know and also i had to buy my way out of problems too something a drug dealer will never mention is when they actually have to leave the scene you have to buy your way out of goddamn problems too like i had to kind of buy my way out of problems with either like blood or money it sucked. I had to buy my way out of problems. It was so stupid. Blood or money. I had to do it several times in my lifetime. One time I traded my cat, my cat that I lovingly raised for 12 years, to pay for rent. You know? And this was because the Republicans kicked us our asses out on the fucking streets on, De on December 15th of, of 2015. And I had to pay for rent in December and January. And I was like, well, you want my cat and I want two months of rent. And I know that you'll take care of him and love him as I have because you have done so for two years and I've seen it. 
And so I will trade you the cat for two months of rent so I can um, wait until the thaw to leave your home. And I promise you on my heart and soul and, and everything, I'll sign a contract and a written agreement with you that while I'm a bum who can't pay rent today, you can have my cat for two months of rent and then I will leave. But then eventually, I, I, I like years later, I, I, came, I came to believe that he had fleeced me for the cat because two months of rent is subjective and relative. The You know, what, what, the, what, what the value of that is, but the cat was invaluable. And so I went back looking for my cat, and that's how I got my probation violation. And they threatened me with ten years in jail. It sucked, and and it sucked. And it took it took two 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 years and four months to clear it. Uh, two years of which I was in the madhouse, and I lost the love of my life and all this stupid shit. It just you know I love talking about this stuff because it's just it, it's like you know I I look at it sometimes like all of those things are my fault. I know them to be my fault. All of those things are my fault. The shortcomings of the people who can't totally help me. That's my fault somehow. I fucking feel this. I feel that, that as a citizen, as as an American, I have failed them. I just I just I, I have not supported them. I fucked off and got high and played video games my whole life. I just I wasn't a supportive American citizen like I should have been. I was an Asperger's video game player who sits who sits and and, and does crazy things. And and, and was a musician type and I, I i just didn't fit the mold and i feel sorrow that i didn't really reach the standard that i think most americans are expected to reach and i was kind of in the in, in the end like a, a financial leash so i work every single day trying to change that because i don't i don't know what to do you know to to to, to save my my m m myself from 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 what has happened I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I. I, just, I think the stream is it. I saved myself from what has happened. I. I really don't know. It's the destitution of America. We. Have, we have. We are crawling up out of the ghetto. I know because I did raise five thousand dollars cash with my friend M, and I am very proud of that. And we did pay motel. We take. We. We paid motels for two years and seven months. You know motels like spent the expensive ones like extended stay that are like between sixteen and ninety five dollars a uh, like a day. And we didn't. Run, I'm not proud of this. I'm just proud that we made it, because if we hadn't, I mean, I don't think she did make it. Not really. You know. Worked right there. That was my best friend for goddamn three years or something like that. I mean, like it was it was thick. We were like partners. We didn't hold counsel with anybody the fuck else. I didn't ask anybody else about anything or anyone. I just loved my heroin my heroin girl. You know, I loved my heroin girl, and she would do anything for me, and I did anything for her. You know, I loved my heroin girl like a good Everclear fan. And, um, and now I lost her and I lost my next one after that. And, and I'm sure I'll lose my next one after that because it, because it's just, you know, it's just never good enough. I never have the five grand to buy my way out of the mess. And when I do, it's not enough. It sucks. You know, I had a very, I lived, I lived in the lower class all of my life. I think, I don't think I ever even made seven figures in my whole life. And if you count everything I ever, ever worked for, I believe it's something like maybe $275,000 or something like that. If I, and I worked for like 17 years of my life and, um, I, I mean more if you can count the stream I, I, I can't tell the stream doesn't pay so I don't call it a job but uh, but if you count my stream I'm, I'm at 20 I've been working for 20 years of my life dribble them on the top of that and I mean, I had large gaps in between since when, since when I was 16 to when I was like, you know, mid forties of 20 out of the 24 years I did work something like, I think like 17 to them, 17 of them. There was a lot like seven years in there that I really didn't f fucking work. I just fucked off. But even then, if you really count, like when I was a drug dealer and when I was a credit card thief and when I was a fucking uh you know fucking bad person that i did all the time for and all this stuff like fucking you know the the problem was is is you know you have these large gaps large gaps in the fucking time i'm gonna get off the subject now i just like talking about this stuff freeform because it's kind of funny
plate there to remind yourself that there are hash browns there. And once again, there are hash browns. People clapping in the back. <laughs> How the hell did they memorize? I love getting off on it because it's like I don't know. It's it's like trippy. Like in the end, even with the five grand, we didn't make it with the five grand. Like honestly, I have some sympathy for the homeless and, and stuff. I had five grand in my hand, and it wasn't enough. We had to save and save and save. The five grand was not enough, is what I'm getting at here. It took me a while to get around to the goddamn fucking point, right? To get the five grand to get off the fucking streets, I had to save and save for four and a half years. And when I got there, it was it was nothing. It wouldn't have done anything. I was like, well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for six months rent, and I'm gonna work for every goddamn day like a dog for all six months, and I'm gonna pay my rent. And I'm gonna be a fucking surf for the rest of my life, like a slave essentially. And I looked at it like that, and 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 it sucked, and it was looking like that reality. And when when the day hit, I I came time to decide what to spend the money on, and we looked at the savings, and there was you know there was enough in there. There was some tens of thousands of dollars. I was like, I th I believe I would like to buy a home. I'll take a tiny home of like a shack with a toilet, over like on some land, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, you know, I would take a shack with a toilet on some land and pay you five hundred to a thousand dollars a month for rent, like I would in Denver. A lot more, like double that in Denver. And if you would just like let me take a swing at trying to get better again, and it went a lot better than that. We got a good deal on the fifth wheel. We got like the land is 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 owned by my stepfather. We got like, you know, we got taken care of on the DIY bent. My mother literally fucking painted this place because I was in fucking essentially prison, except it was in its, it was a, uh, it was a madhouse. It was a, it's a place for people that have terrible, like, you know, mental problems because of real life issues. Not people that came and walking in being like, I'm crazy. Please help me. These are people that took like big smacks into the pavement like me or people that like, you know, have been, have been in jail all of their lives and stuff like that. It was, it was prison. It was like essentially uh, a prison asylum for people who were facing terrible, terrible, like, like uh, terrible legal ramifications and, and, and a place for them to take asylum mentally while they faced a battle with a system that's what that's what that place was and while i belonged there for the two years that i was there i've never totally belonged there i've never really totally needed help like that they just raised the prices so fucking high that we couldn't afford to live in the motel anymore you know they raised the prices so high we couldn't afford to live in the motel anymore it was it was it was frankly scandal scandalous how much money they charge how they treat you all that stuff fucking scandalous frankly fucking scandalous Right. How do they, how do they keep these we we had a waffle house across the street from the motel and we were we were best friends with the waitress there and we had this ritual we would we would we would get high get up get high get showered both of us get go to work get in the cab take her to work at 9 30 p.m we come back and by 6 a.m we pay for the motel room where they kick us out uh we go home at 4 15 in the morning after she's done stripping and i'm done driving and i drive all day she she gets to go in at 9 30 i wake up at like 4 30 p.m and i work for 12 hours straight from 4 30 till 4 4 a.m in the morning because i'm an honest person I'm, i work for my for my taxi income and i i lived in that motel by all rights and i paid that money le legally and 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 i worked 12 hour days she worked four hour days and she was a terrible heroin addict i wasn't really that bad you know and i wasn't really even that much of an addict i was actually fairly actually like highly functional in, in, in that period of my life actually i didn't really fuck up too much i was making a lot of money and i was just you know i was doing drugs but i didn't i didn't really fuck up too much you know uh and it just there was this point where we just couldn't pay it anymore we couldn't pay for all the gas and all the driving if, if something bad happened or if one of us was sick or something like that and you're constantly sick if you're a junkie if so if something bad happened you were just out you're just out you couldn't pay for the motel room anymore it wasn't like you it didn't matter if you had produced three thousand dollars in three days or something like that if you didn't have the three thousand dollars right then and there you weren't going to fucking live 
And that's America. That's modern America. Thousands of fucking dollars. It makes no sense. It's never been like that. We don't need to fleece our own people like that. I consider it to be a, a form of traitorism, essentially, to, to raise the prices that high or to let the businesses do that or, or to, to, to wheel and deal on the global scale where we, where, we, where, we, where we lead this inflation to this place where everything's so expensive that three grand doesn't feel like it can even get you off the streets. After the deposit and the rent and having to have an address and all that, you can have three grand in a motel room. It happened to me a bunch of times. You still might not make it. Forget your dupe, dumb After seven years of that, I started seeing all this help. Help from the court. Help from the DAs. Help with my student loans. Help from the Democrats. Help from the Republicans with PUA. Help from the system. Help from everybody. Help from my girlfriends. Everybody, everybody just like started pitching in at that point. They saw what I was up against. It was insane. And everybody just started helping. That's what it was. It was just insane. It was like, like everybody started helping. Uh... Like, like my mother painted this place, okay. stuff okay. like that. Like she did all the interior decoration of it. She bought it and welt and dealt and hunted the, the, you know, the West coast looking for, for, for deals. Like, you know, everybody helped me get off the streets. I would say everybody did all my friends and, and then I immediately turned their my back on them because I don't like, you know, and not, not in some cold way. I just immediately went to work. I just got here, went to work. First thing I did, I got here four days later. I was like, I've got internet, I've got power, I've got a television, I'm working. And I just fired up the fucking stream. I didn't even get, I didn't even have a fear response to it. I just, I just fired it up. I was like, I'm working. I'm going to do whatever I consider to be working. I know it has to be on my terms, but I will, I will be my own boss for the rest of eternity. I, I can't have another boss. They, they drove me into the fucking ground. Working for anybody but yourself is goddamn stupid. It's for stupid people. It's the purview of stupid people. It's okay for teenagers and young men and young women and stuff. But it's it's not, you know, like like age to, till about, I'd say, 28, something like that. But past the age of 28, I really feel that it should basically be, be illegal in this country for you to work for anybody but yourself. You should not be working for a boss past the age of 28. You should not be in a dead end job. You should be thinking about who's going to feed you and pay for your meals when you're 65, 64. You know, will you still need me? Will you still leave? You know, will you still love me when I'm 64? Because it's you know because because who's there going to do it? Is it the government? Is the government going to take care of you when you're 64? No. And I freaked out about it all of my goddamn life. I did everything that I could to take to stay what I considered to be at the top of the lower class. And it still wasn't enough. You could come up with three to five grand pulling strings and you know dating strippers and stuff like that. You could, but it wouldn't matter. It still wasn't enough. The fucking people, the fucking fleecers with the high prices and the problems and towing your car and all that stupid shit that they do. It costs you money when you least expect it. All that fucking shit that they do to fight Americans, essentially. I look at it as, as Americans fighting Americans, trying to rob us of our fucking money, our resources, and our lifeblood. Our banks, our colleges, our politicians, our food, our water, our electricity, everything. All of it is just this huge fucking price-fixing scam. Oil you know, motel rooms, all of it. And when America was affordable, we were booming. As long as America remained remained affordable and you could get a goddamn in for between 20, 40 and 60 bucks a night. And you could get like, you know, and you could, you could maybe like maybe find new hope in a new place. And, and gas was only maybe 225 or something like that, as opposed to 450 or three 375. It was okay. But I mean, you guys raised the prices so high that it killed our country. Fiscal conservatives have raised our prices so goddamn high so to wheel and deal with their fucking lobbies and their businessmen and their fucking stock stock exchange and their Jordan Belmonts and their fucking their their Bitcoin thieves that they 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 just don't really understand how bad that was how how bad that greed was it destroyed us N now. Now I don't know I don't know what we do to solve it. You guys have a clue? I don't think so your codes that you're learning if the customer wants wheat toast we sent 
we enact plans and we make laws and we change things and we maybe cap the salary a bit and we and we raise the salary a bit and we make it so that anybody can get a job and anybody can get a car anybody can get food and anybody can get an education and anybody can get mental health care or child care and and, and and all of that is government funded and and I'm, i know it costs a lot of money but if you take care of the people the people will take care of the g that's how it works we know one solid thing about philanthropy when it comes to the poor who are actually struggling trying to get their way out of this mess is, is every dollar that you spend, they bring back to the economy like two or three years later, they bring back to the economy tenfold. That's something about philanthropy that, that they never talk about. When you help the lower class, they, they literally boom the country's income like 10 times in two or three years. We know it because every time they actually give out welfare, everybody gets well, it gets better again. Flip the jelly pack. Like everybody gets better again. And then and as soon as something, as soon as the, the, like they can't get jobs anymore, they go back on welfare. They get better again. It's this endless fucking cycle, but it's true. It does work. To indicate weak. Let's see what we have. Like the, I mean, it, they stay on welfare if they can't get a job, which is the current problem. But it wasn't like that till 1990s, 1999, maybe. It wasn't a bad job market until 1999. That wasn't even that long ago. That was like 24 years ago. It's a long time, a quarter century, but in the human state of affairs, it's actually not that bad. Let's say that maybe the next quarter of, of a century, we don't have as much like terrible fucking grifting and thievery from our politicians and the corrupt people of this world and this country. I don't know how to enact laws to stop it, but I know that the money needs to go to the people first before the businessmen. The businessmen just stuff their banks with it. If we throw it a butter and a mustard pack. And they let it rot while we rot, while we die of the deprivation. Like I said to beg on the other day. My complaint with this country is the fiscal the fiscal conservatives. It's always been the same complaint. They think I want to, I want to boil it down to some fucking woke culture thing and talk about this or that or their judgment or calling them a Nazi or something like that. No, no, I I'm I just don't like fiscal conservatives. We have we we have a land of plenty, you know. <laughs> we have a land of plenty. We really do. If we take care of the land, it'll it'll give us life for as long as we're here. But we don't, and we don't, and we and we charge too much money for everything. It's insane. When did it be? When did it become okay for Americans to fleece Americans with pricing? Isn't that essentially treason? I'm one of the customers, extremely attractive. When did it become okay for them to squelch free trade? You can indicate that with one of your buddies without having a harassment lawsuit looming over you. We're gonna take two strips yep. of bacon, two and strips of bacon, honey. and a pound of honey. Ugh. If the customer mm -hmm. wants a slice of Texas toast, mark the eggs with a jelly pack and place a slice of Texas toast or a biscuit on the plate to remind you that they prefer to have Texas toast or a biscuit instead. So couldn't you? <laughs> uh, no, nope. no, and and every but every business does this too. They have this this stupid rule policy set that you have to memorize if you want to stay there, and that's how you keep a job. You just have to memorize their stupid bullshit that they want and then make sure you do it perfectly over and over and over again. And then you understand that you're a cog in the machine that will never be out of the machine until you start working for yourself. Yeah. Honestly, all the time I think about going back to work for myself. If, 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 if like the stream, I don't require it to make money, but I do have a family to take care of on a very meager fucking disability, you know, income and I don't know what to do about that. And I can't go back to work. I'm, I can't take another boss. So all the time I think about what can I do? I made an investment in video this year. You know, I don't know. I, like, I'm just like, what can I do? What can I do? Why not just put the white? You guys have choked up everything, every avenue. It seems like unless you're hustling drugs on the fucking street or some shit or selling blowjobs, what the fuck can you actually do? What can you do? What can you do to get money in this culture? It's actually insane. You can't. You'd have to rob a bank or something like that. You can't, actually. You have to sit up and wait for months while paychecks slowly trickle in to reach some kind of crazy amount like three grand. It is still not enough to pay last month's first month's and deposit. Even after working for like a year. And, and where, did, like, where did you live while you were doing that? The problem with the rent is, is it actually breaks our reality, sort of. Where did you live while you were working to pay the money to, to, to I'm sorry, to earn the money to pay rent? Where did you live while you earned the money to pay rent? If you're on the, if you're homeless on the streets and you have no money, you can't pay for a place to live, to wake up and take a shower and get good and have an address to receive a paycheck for, you know, at, at a job. How are you going to do that? You can't pay first and last month's rent. It's three to $5,000. 
that's that problem has been like that since i was 24 years old you know it's been 17 years or 18 19 20 years something like that bread like why not put the wheat or the like raisin bran why does a welch you know like i don't know pack have to i don't know i don't have the solutions to it but i know that it's been bad and i i don't know why it's okay for americans to treat americans like this you can i consider both parties kind of traitors it feels like the the, the, the soup line was their version of world war three indicate getting the eggs some folks like to have their toast unbuttered or dry in this case we have a special mark to remind us to hold the butter easy enough it's a butter packet underneath the jelly packet like this by putting a butter under the jelly means no butter putting a butter under the jelly means no butter and this is old waiter etiquette too which that is observed all over the world too there's there is waiter code they all adhere to it too they all do it because if you don't you don't get the tip <laughs> there's a style to forks and spoons and and wait waiter staff stuff and how to set a, na a napkin and a table there's all that stuff there's robert's rules of reason there's all this other stuff I had a, that me. there's like a, there's etiquette and and literally it has been boiled down to a science that one could call a, a law that in a proper well civilized place you could expect but i wouldn't say it's normal in america that much anymore nothing to me put that on the i would say the perkins in the you know that would say the perkins in the village inns and the whatever restaurants are popular i don't even know the names of other places of restaurants like ihops and, and denny's and stuff i would say they hold a pretty good lower class standard yeah yeah but i mean it used to be that the diners were never lower class they always stayed a certain level of like you know, a certain level. What if a customer wants double? But now it's like common to see a rundown diner, and I don't, I don't know. That's, that's a weird thing because restaurants are expensive to keep alive. Toast, easy. You have to keep those machinery running whether you're using it or not. Gas stations are the same way. Like you have to use all that stuff whether you're you're using it or not, and that's expensive. And, and so if nobody comes in to buy from your crappy restaurant, you're really in the hole because not only did you not make any money, it's incredibly expensive to keep a staff running and. And all this stuff and, and and they say that one of the worst problems in america right now is zombie companies which is this concept that like you make a company designed to not really go anywhere it's not that you designed it to fail you're a, you're actually really happy and you make a swing and you try to to do a successful company and you get you get you know you get loans and stuff but you're not sad or fucked up if you don't make it because you, you can just declare bankruptcy and you lived for you know five to ten years on that loan that you you got to run a company one could say that's the american dream now is to get a loan from the g for a company you know or the bank uh to run to make a company and then you fail in making the company and you get to copy you, you get to keep the proceeds and then declare i declare bankruptcy like michael fucking scott and 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 then you can just write it off that's the new american dream and then in, in, in that time for four or five years maybe you you bred had bought a house bought, bought a nice five hundred thousand dollar house maybe you have kids now and a wife and a mortgage and all that right or or or, or vice versa maybe it's woman doing it like, like in the case of of, of of people that i know but like you know but like overall uh you know it, it doesn't matter the at the end of the five years you don't have the money anymore and you lose the house you don't have that money anymore. It's it sucks. It, it sucks to live in this bleak reality where money doesn't mean anything in America. It's ridiculous. We are not poor. We are not poor and we are not bougie either. I don't want to hear it from people like Nicki Minaj anymore about how bougie we are. We are not a bougie people. We don't actually respect that anymore. We are like we are like a middle class. Hopefully, like I I would say the ideal, the ideal in this country now is like the the most favored thing is the upwardly mobile. You know, the upwardly mobile middle class. And that's really rare. It's kind of expensive. It's hard to reach it. Mark the egg. Starting to to be rarer. People don't have that kind of money anymore. And then put an additional jelly pack beside the. Oh my egg. god! And, and they mean this standard too. And you can shove it up your fucking ass sideways. I couldn't give a flying fuck about your grape jelly. Who the fuck cares about grape jelly? The fact that you wasted this much time on it is like I don't know. It seems almost to me like war crime levels of irresponsibility. Toast like this. 
That was easy. You know what? That thank God the like face- like the fact that you took this much time to think about it and then write it and then like then force people to do it. This is what we do with our human money, time, and resources. We teach you how to put the grape jelly on the fucking plate at at, at uh, you know at, at at the Waffle House. I mean, that's how a good business is run, I guess. But do we really need to train the fucking waiter how to put food on a plate? I guess if you're a classy fuck and you have a lot of money, yeah. To me, Greg. Thank you so much. Also, at any time you walk in a freezer and you see <laughs> a containment of alcohol, don't touch it, or I'll break your fingers and I'll fire you immediately. While most customers order two eggs, occasionally a customer may only want a single egg. In that case, we'll mark the egg in the appropriate position to show how the egg is cooked, and then place a ketchup pack. Oh my it. god. Here you can see this shit is so fucking cheesy. So one egg in the gates, a ketchup pack under a Welch's. I would love oh my god, what was that? What was that? Jesus Christ. Uh, you immediately DC the second I undocked. That was crazy. Get back in. Did you DC? Oh, yeah. Wow, I did DC. Yep, I DC'd out. Then I'm not going to lose the Octor. What was that? I lost I lost connection immediately. Oh, what are we doing? Oh my god, what are we doing here? To see just one of these full and a guy just being like, All right, toast with waffles. <laughs> it's just it's like a full plate mm-hmm. of like intricate designs and shit. In other cases, a customer may be hungry and might want three eggs. I might want three eggs. Here's an example. Is the mustard indicate it's the hungry? He means fat. Okay, makes sense. If the jelly pack indicates two eggs, then how might you mark the plate if a customer wants four eggs? That's right. You use two jelly packs stacked on top of each other like this. Like <laughs> he said, that's right. As if someone's like, do you stack the the the, the Welch's jam right. packs together? He's like, of course you do. So it makes sense. You're catching on quick. Also, you put it in the center. You need to put it at the center of the plate to make sure that they know that's four because if you put it on the bottom, that means that there's an active order in the waffle. House. <laughs> in a small place like Waffle House, they would be like, there's an active here in here. Guys, like, oh, my connection died. Oh, there you are. You're back. Okay, get back in before I lose the soccer tour, please. Yeah, that's okay. Connect now. Did you disconnect again? back in Connecting. i'm an adventure look at it, it like beat timed out that's good i'm not in the akator at least wow that was a fast load the back and forth what no 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 what happened here as one of the most controversial okay, and intense no. beefs in internet no no customers order two eggs occasionally a customer may only want a single egg in that case only want a single egg, egg. In appropriate position to show how the egg is cooked and then place a ketchup pack below it here you can see that I have marked a single overlight breakfast so one egg indicates a ketchup one indicator in the case <laughs> I would love to see just one of these full and a guy just being like, all right, toast with waffles. <laughs> it's, just, it's like a full plate of like intricate mm. designs and shit. In other cases, a customer may be hungry and might want three eggs. Here's an example. This is the mustard indicate. It, it's a plus one metric in the, okay, it makes sense. Okay. If the jelly pack indicates Active. two eggs, then how might you mark the plate if a customer wants four eggs? That's right. You use two jelly packs stacked on top of each other like this. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like I said, that's right. As if someone's like, do you stack the the, the, the Welch's jam packs together? He's like, of course you do. So <laughs> of course you do. Also, you put it in the center. You need to put it at the center of the plate to make sure that they know that's four because if you put it on the bottom, that means that there's an active order <laughs> in the Waffle House. <laughs> In a small place like Waffle House, they would be like, there's an active figure in here. Guy's like, <laughs> like dresses it up, and he's like, Aaron. <laughs> One of the most popular ways to have eggs at the Waffle House is scrambled. So let's talk about different ways to mark scrambled eggs. I love Greg's smile, dude. Greg kills me with a smile. Let's talk about different ways to mark scrambled eggs. <laughs> 
So let's say your wife's divorcing you. You're trying to hide some of the assets so you don't have to pay as much in alimony. Well, how would you mark that down so she can't hear you while you're talking with your lawyer? Let's grab two packs of ketchup and a bottle of Tabasco sauce and figure it out. <laughs> let's assume your wife's been cheating on you for several months. For several months, and you <laughs> want to hire a hitman to come and basically snuff her out. If you're paranoid and believe that your phones are tapped, your wife is trying to catch you in one of these misdoings, <laughs> go ahead, and open up your window, and put four cans of baked beans, <laughs> <laughs> a small bottle of Gorilla Glue, oh. the time is ready to stick to the plan. <laughs> the outside, like. <laughs> put the fourth can of baked beans. Let's go. It is important put to the fourth pair. Yeah, the customer yeah, gets one slice of cheese for each egg. To make this a triple scramble cheese, you add the mustard pack. Below yeah, and do three pack, slices of cheese. Add a third slice of cheese. Oh my so God! Do you really need to explain the triple scramble, scramble you fucking piece of shit? And place it on the top of the I hate white people. Kind of it, like this is such white culture. It's such old white eighties culture from a whole corporate fucking place that we just don't live in anymore i don't mean i don't mean i don't mean i hate white people i don't i mean old white culture from from 80s corporate america it drives me crazy the the office was about it that whole fucking cubicle reality it's it's so shitty it's so soulless dilbert did a comic book strip about it you know soulless goddamn cubicle life ugh with like corporate seminar seminars and corporate uh, corporate fucking rules about how to do the Welch's grape fucking jelly on your fucking triple scramble. <laughs> like I now there needs to be a standard and they're allowed to have the standard and I'm kind of nitpicky, but I mean like this is is anybody really expected to remember this? I think you're supposed to sort of have common sense, read the recipe, make the make the make, make the dish how they want you to make it and then and I don't know how the waitress could really fuck it up really. I don't really know is it putting the grape jelly on the wrong side of the plate? You know, I don't know, but whatever. The There's three the slices of cheese. cheese. It's over. It's over. How do I put the cheese on here? What for? Greg, there's three slices of cheese on the plate already. the cheese on the plate already means there's not going to be cheese? No, no, because he said that the cheese already correlated. The amount of cheese should correlate with how many eggs it's ordered. The customer gets one slice of cheese for each egg. Oh, good. That sounds like a good amount. You put the grape pack on top of the mustard, which indicates... Shut the fuck up, Greg. You have three slices of cheese. Why would you need to cut off the corner, Greg? I mean... Mm -hmm. Damn it, Greg. People that he th it's like, you probably want this is why we can't have nice things. Your stupid corporate culture was so dumb. I hate it, Greg. I hate you. Damn it, Greg. Outside, smoke some crack. And you're probably... I know, right? Like, honestly, if you're working at the Waffle House, I fully support that. Please do. It's not like you're driving a goddamn car. We're not talking about fucking raising children or, or operating machinery here. We're talking about the fucking Waffle House. You might burn your hands on the coffee or something. But I'm thinking, or maybe you spill it in somebody's lap. But I'm thinking that's probably about the worst thing that could happen if you smoke crack at the Waffle House. I honestly support my people at the Waffle House smoking crack. I'm okay with it. Gonna forget that these slices of cheese are God damn it, it's a drug bullshit. Here for muscle memory, go ahead and just tear off. I mean, as long as he's not jittering when he brings the plate to you or whatever, you know, I think we're probably fine. He's not spilling coffee all over you. I think we're probably fine. The corner and put it on top of the Welch's grape. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the Welch's Grape. You guys have a fucking obsession with Welch's Grape. How much money did they pay you? Ha I, 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 don't dodge the question. How much does Welch's Grape pay the Waffle House every year? What's that contract worth, huh? Take the plate to the customer. We used to leave the Is that why you're forcing these poor, poor employees to learn where to put the Welch's Grape on that motherfucking plate or you're fired? The mayo packs on it just to... Yeah, yeah, yeah well, they, they, you know, Big Ketchup got to them back in 1984. So, so like, you know, Big Ketchup got back, got back to them, got, got them way back in 1984. And, like, now, you know, now they've got to put... The, now Big Ketchup is requiring them that the, 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 the grape jelly and the mustard and the ketchup definitely need to be on the plate south six, at, at 6 o'clock. And if you put it at 7 o'clock, you're fired. Shits and giggles because we like to put one over. If you push it to the side, it means you like biscuits up your butthole, you fucking idiot. Over on the customers, but 
Some guy ended up getting stabbed three times in his face. So we'd like to make sure and remind people, take the mayo pack off or you could be deader than a doorknob. But now that you know how to read and call out orders here, we need to make sure that you understand how to safely prep food at Waffle House, which I'm very intrigued to see because I have seen some heinous shit at Waffle Houses. I've seen someone take out a hose and spray the floor and kick the food scraps on the floor underneath the ovens. I've seen that with my eyes. So I'm very curious what to see what Waffle House corporate has in store for us here. The four cornerstones of food safety. Hi, I'm Brian Literal. And I'm Carl. Your literal name is Brian Literal. Oh my god, literal. Really? Oh no, that's got to be the worst last name I've ever fucking heard. My name is Brian Literal. No, nope, Tom Cocaine is still worse. It's still worse. We want to welcome you to the four cornerstones of food safety. Did you know over 9 million people a year are sickened by the foodborne illness? Yep. That's a great way to sicken by the food and born illness. Our food safety video. Did you know nine million people <laughs> eating food? And that's your job. You're, that's your job now. You're going to be handing them food. Nine million of them are going to get sick because of you. That's your job now. That's why we're telling you this. Probably our food. But Probably our food. That's why we're telling you this. But you know, it's, it's our way of corporately telling you <laughs> that, that you're going to get sick and you're probably going to get other people sick if you give them this food we like to try to skirt that number. we try to skirt it by warning you but not warning you you know like any good white corporate transition out but as many as fifty-five thousand people every year require hospitalization because of foodborne illness i should have been hospitalized that one time i think at chipotle i was oh i think it was probably longer than and so much uh, it was the worst, man. my asshole was so chapped anytime i tried to Gross. sit down it was like painful bloody yeah. shit. oh it was the worst uh, too. when will i learn when will uh, i don't know i don't know when i'll learn and over one thousand uh, people die each year over a thousand people a year die of the foodborne illnesses. What if it's the guacamole. It's rotten guacamole and made him very, very sick. And I would make a video on my channel. <laughs> my boss died from being food poisoned. <laughs> to protect Boing. the Waffle House brand, to help ensure that our customers have a great Waffle House experience, and because it's still like Waffle food, House experience. We have Brian Literal. <laughs> He's next to Tom Cocaine. Seriously. Tom Brocane. I feel like Brian is going to cry off the side here. <laughs> I want to name a character Brocane. I think the hilarious. I really want to name myself my character. I want to name a character Tom Brocane. I think that'd be hilarious. Tom Brocane. Hi, I'm Tom Brocane. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Tom. What's up? I'm Tom Brocane. Brian's getting flashbacks to people like having heart attacks at his restaurant. Take okay. Safety very seriously, sure, dude. Honestly, how many times a day do you think at a Waffle House does someone like drop something on the floor and they like look around, and they like put it back on the plate? Yeah. Oop, drop my cheese. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, I was tearing off a slice at the corner of the top and I put on the floor, but five second rule. Just like a house has a foundation with four corners, our Waffle House way of service of production is also built on the four corners of food safety. Good personal hygiene. <laughs> yeah, you must be. <laughs> You gotta bathe and be sure to wash your hands. And if you do end up smoking meth or <laughs> It'll crack, wash your hands when you come back, when you come back, please. Controlling time and temperature, preventing yep. cross contamination, and cleaning and sanitizing. I went to a Waffle House one time. I remember it was like. I really house. want yeah. the Waffle House now. It's painful. I really want a fucking Belgian waffle with cream and not cream, but the whipped cream and like uh, some bacon on top of it. With like some uh, some syrup and some uh, some crack. Thing we were like chatting. This is probably back when I was like twenty one or something. <laughs> we were all laughing and he like oh you know whatever. And then we noticed the guy at the grill was like it was really busy in there. It was like probably like eleven at night. Not a lot of people working. And the guy working the grill was like going really fast. He was sweaty. <laughs> we noticed that his sweat oh. was all over. Oh. The shoes. Like, I mean like the fucking sweat was going down in the hash brown oh. and stuff. Yep. Can't do food on acid. Can't do it. Yep. Ew. Oh. Did you still wrap them up and sell them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you sick? 
<laughs> Good God. For women who prefer the Waffle House headscarf, or for those who the Waffle House, House headscarf, hair nut must be worn underneath. <laughs> Men with short hair can also wear the traditional Waffle Who's House. Who's got short hair? Wear a hair at a Waffle House. <laughs> no. This table isn't ready yet to see the next customer. That's humans for you. Sanitized. The amount of times I've sat at a dirty table at Waffle House because they just haven't come and gotten the plates have always been funny. Like, let me clear that out for you. And they like grab the shit and they just like wipe it once. Like, what do you want? Can I get a Sprite? Yeah. Like, walk off. I'm like, we're in for a beautiful ride, aren't we? I hope you've enjoyed our presentation on the four cornerstones of food safety. Food safety is an important part of a great customer experience. Listen, I, I have never worked at a Waffle House, but I can tell you that I have not seen any of those displays. It seems like it's a little, a little grody, if I'm being honest. We know how to receive orders. We know how to cook them safely and cleanly. Now, let's prepare ourselves to deal with the clientele that comes in. You know, you're not going to get the most favorable clientele, but you have to deal with them anyways. <laughs> Oh, this music right here is so sick. Da -da. I want to. I'm gonna make a rap song out of that. I think. We, I think I can make a really good fucking blues trap song out of that song. Actually, I just need to spin it down and fuck it around. Oh, I'm logged in. Am I? Wait, what happened to Eve? Wait. Oh God, am I here yet? No, I'm not here yet. But I'm safe. Look, I'm fucking safe. There's no way anybody's popping me here. I'm totally safe. I figured out how to do this better, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bank the sixty mil, and I'm not gonna lose it. Made so much money today. Waffle House feel like a very magical place. Also, the older. God uh, damn it! I want a wa waffle. I want a Belgian waffle with some kind of specialty thing like bacon and uh, I don't know ranch or something. Bacon and ranch Belgian waffle. It sounds disgusting, but I mean the bacon will make it taste so good. At that point, you're basically eating a burger without the meat, you know. And oh my god, a bacon Belgian ranch. Waffle, not a no, no ranch. Um, yeah, just I want a Belgian waffle. That's all. Aesthetic, like back then, like a VHS kind of feel, fits way better than all these new clean cut videos, dude. The uh, the Chili's makes one of my favorite meals of all time, which is the bacon chicken ranch quesadilla. And oh, they make that motherfucker nice and crispy. It's like crispy, crunchy, you know, and it's a huge fucking quesadilla. It's like the biggest quesadilla on the market, basically. And it's so good. And it's got crispy, good chicken in it and crispy, good bacon. And you're like, oh, I'm eating this. And there's like a bowl of blue cheese with it. And it's so fucking good. So good. Oh, and welcome to Waffle House guacamole and fucking like red crumbly peppery stuff it makes it all crispy and peppery and stuff so good fucking i'm hungry it's weird because i had a really good meal tonight too but i mean for some reason today i'm hungry usually i'm not but today i'm hungry i really actually feel like i could eat a pretty big fucking like steak meal or something like that i'm almost never like that anymore but today i feel like i could eat, eat a fucking steak meal i wouldn't be able to fit all that my stomach is just shrunk but I mean, like, I could try. I could, I could eat a couple bites of the potato and a couple bites of the steak and a couple bites of the, of the, of the, whatever else. I have food, I suppose. I could cook food. I have, um, I have steak and potatoes and, uh, whatever the other mushrooms, or mushrooms and, and carrots and stuff, um, that I made in the crock pot. I could just do a four hour, you know, cook. This took a long time at 37.5. Wasn't it going faster than this? I want you to unlock and go. I want to descan. 
Metamorphosis. Uh oh. Well, this ship goes fast. Wait, it goes really fast. I didn't know that. Cluster shut down. 108. I'm going 600 MS. Nice. The cliff and a metamorphosis. Okay, I'm gonna stealth up. Just in case somebody pops through, got a nice look, the little good little 40 km there burst. And I'm slowly spinning down, but I am getting some progress here. I'm learning how to like kind of half stealth my way to my target. Got significant um, progress there. I'm only 59 km. Uh, the fireworks are annoying, but I need fire crystals. So three, six, I need two more. This was all my money, but that's all right. It was incidental fire crystal money anyway. Damn it, Greg. And welcome to the position. We I really hate you, Greg. Why do you sound so soft when you talk? Adore core. It's so crazy. Instead of just being like, as a manager, you have to orientate people. They're like, just play the fucking video. Have them sit down and play the video. They'll be fine. You're just like sitting in the back. Welcome to the door core. If you're energetic, a team player who possesses that ability to think on your feet. In all your life, people have always said that you're the friendliest person they've ever met. And that you really know how to make people feel at home. Then you're our kind of person. What if there's a guy who's like, no one has ever said that to me. Also, Oops. I'm supposed to think on my feet. Am I answering a door and saying hello to people? Uh goodbye hello oh which one was it a city where you like oh god being a team member in a door core is more than just a smile and a quick hello as you'll see in this video i'm at 85 again a already talker, an olympic sprinter and an entertainer there's like a one leg disabled guy he's like i don't think i have what it takes to fill this position <laughs> I think a professional appearance is vital at the door. I'm talking about neat, clean, well-groomed, enthusiastic, great attitude. After all, I am the first impression of Waffle House a customer gets. They had to have gotten rid of this position. I have never been into a Waffle House where someone is like, that's their job, is to be like, oh, come on in. Never seen that. Hello, welcome to Waffle House. How are y'all doing today? Hello, welcome to Costco. I love you. Just a minute before your table's ready. So why don't you help yourself to a cup of coffee over the coffee bar? Thank you. Oh, man, you're straight from the Savannah, huh? That's some Georgia up in there. Um, gotta send fire crystals. Did I send all of them? Yes, I did. Nice. Okay, we log over now. How's this going? I feel safe. There's a Varger on D scan. Three Vargers. Did they never figure out where I am? <laughs> They've jumped through. There's still the metamorphosis. I 
It's an exploration ship, which is good. Ah. I black screened. No, um, I wish to. What am I at now? I'm at 37.5 and I'm only 49 cam away. Now there's an Ishtar and a Scimitar. I mean, it'll take half an hour, but I'll get there. I'll get to that car container. Mm -hmm. Because, like, behind him, there's a sea of open tables. Your table's not ready yet. Why don't you go ahead and help yourself to some coffee over the coffee bar? I'd be like, nah, just stand. I don't want any coffee. <laughs> All right, well, no one's ever neglected the coffee bar. <laughs> 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 okay, well, uh, no one's ever not gotten coffee before the coffee bar. Could I interest you in the bathroom? Sir, do you have to relieve yourself? What? No, I just want to have breakfast. Okay, well, that table isn't quite ready yet. So, this is my space, and I can't have you stand in here. So, I'm going to have to really encourage you to sit down. Look, they're all gone. They're all gone. Park. I'm going to go. <laughs> Somebody told me when I first started to think of Waffle House like I would my home. That helped a lot because I pride myself on being a good host. <laughs> I pride myself on being a good host. My cousin sells crack cocaine. <laughs> 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 and have to cross the border. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of friends dropping in. Either. I wouldn't dream of friends dropping in. That, that that just never happens. I don't have any friends. I'm I'm Greg. For a few minutes, without having them sit a bit. I have the tie, only the tie. <laughs> the tie and I get along great. There's Lee Clef in a metamorphosis again, which is no good. Why is he popping in? It's annoying. Well, he's not really close to me, so... I am going to scoop this cargo now. Look how fast this thing goes. 700 MS. It's good. I don't want to lose it. It's expensive. But it's a good way to guarantee that I reach this cargo. Open, open, open. There, take you, fleet hanger. Go, go. Did you do it? No. Wait, did you do it? Approach, damn it. No, the overview, damn it, the overview. Yes, you did it. Okay, good, go. Uh, nope, I need you to not target that. I want you to go to the station now. Duck. Warp drive active. Wow, that was a really fast fucking warp, actually, the way I did it. I'm learning to fuck around with micro warp drives. Yeah, establish warp vector for war right quick. Yeah. Bye. Hey, I'm safe. Yay. That metamorphosis made me fucking nervous suddenly. Because he was, like, popping in and out. There's a Varger. See, the Vargas popped in. Pokefem Varger. Rick. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm out with my money. Uh-huh. I made 50 mil. <laughs> I love the poke fan. Docking permission requested. Docking oh requested. yeah, made the money. Golem, Varger, Monitor. Uh, fleet hanger. Well, I'm making some money now. 343 million in here. Not bad. <coughs> For solo doing nothing, it's really good.
Here's even more money. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. Offering them something to drink and something good to eat. This is so. This is so southern coded. I like it. Just is. like it's just that good old boy hospitality. I wouldn't dare have someone come into my house without offering to sit down, pouring them a drink, maybe like give a reach cigarette. around, and then talking politics. Immediately talking politics. Excuse me. Here comes another customer. Hello. Welcome to Waffle House. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Here comes another customer. Welcome to Waffle House. The guy just comes with a gun and shoots me. Welcome to Waffle House. Oh! <laughs> 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 screaming in horror. <laughs> in the <laughs> coffee <laughs> bar. <laughs> Just grape jam on his plate. Everyone's illiterate and mute. <laughs> Papa Meat is actually so funny. <laughs> this is my kind of random humor. Humor you never hear it. Somebody comes in with a 12 gauge shotgun. It'll be just a minute before your table's ready, so if you'd like a cup of coffee, help yourself over at the coffee bar. Thank you. <laughs> Thank hey, you. Um, Brad, we're really going to have to have you stop sitting. We're going to have to talk about this. Bar. Okay, because we only have regular <laughs> black coffee and decaf. When there's 20 people over there and only three of them want coffee, it makes it very congested. He's like, Stephanie, I'm going to do my job the way that I was taught to do it, and you need to focus on yourself. So why don't you and the other illiterates start stacking. <laughs> <laughs> Standing there all day, they open the door for you. The other illiterates. But to me, I'm like, I don't want to be pressured immediately. I just want to like, I almost prefer when I walk into a place and like, hey, just take a seat wherever you want. I prefer that. I don't like the idea of a guy forcing me to go to the coffee bar because I'm also I'm a sheep too. So the guy's like, we're not ready for you yet, and you will have a cup of coffee at the coffee bar. I'm not even a big coffee guy, but I probably be like, oh, okay. I just sit down. I guess can I have a coffee? God, all these fits are great too, dude. This is definitely a '90s video. It has to be. It's your job to convince each and every customer that it's a short wait, maybe just a cup of coffee away, and speed up the whole process by having them know what item on the menu they want by the time they're seated. I like how the coffee bar is them sitting in two small chairs by the window. So go ahead and sit over here awkwardly and look at our menu. It's like, what else do they have besides scrambled eggs and bacon and toast? You're going to really want to peruse around and navigate your way through this complex but delicious menu. <laughs> <laughs> No matter how many you always have to keep your eye on that door. I've gone through five axes already. God damn. How many have been closed for two hours, man? We gotta leave. <laughs> I don't ever eat the in this game. Back, it like it will, will it like matter? Tomatoes and cheese and stuff, and he's like, "Plant of the Apes type of shit." They're all just they all talk with sign language. <laughs> When I've made mm -hmm. sure that all customers are happy, I'll wipe down a table and seat that needs it, or maybe even get a table ready for busing. I'm busing. Helping each other helps keep everybody happy. Plus, it gives us the opportunity to serve more customers. Man, I kind of, I kind of yearn for these times too, where these like simple positions had such a dedicated video to it. Because now people would be like, "Hey, just greet." Wait, you forager? There's a like forager taskmaster. It would be that casual now, but back then they're just like, "You are the glue that is holding this operation." <laughs> 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 By the time you leave your shift, people are going to start calling you Elmer because you're the glue that holds this place together. So now you're not a great people, but how do you know that you're not discriminating against your fellow employees? You need to have a strong work environment. Kim, pick up. Mm. Kim, pick up. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me right now? God damn, dude. It was, it are was you like kidding me right second. now? Kim, pick up. Kim! Now! God, he's like, <laughs> complaining. The girl, like, the woman's already walking over, like, dude, I was grabbing it. Goddamn. I don't know if she can't hear me. She's ignoring me. She's a dumb bitch. I'm gonna slap her around. I'm gonna hit her. I'm gonna hit her. I can't even look how slow she's like. Oh, my goodness. My hip. Oh, oh that my dirt. my birthday. Oh, I can't see you. <laughs> oh, look how slow she's walking. Oh, my hip. I'm old. I'm so 
fucking old. Fuck you, Kim! I wish they wouldn't talk about me like that. <laughs> the lighting they have too. It's like a so oh. it's like she's dead. I wish they wouldn't talk about me like that. Well guess what, you old rickety your waist is <laughs> just die already! Even though I'm older than them, I can still do my job. No, you can't. You're a waste of space, you're a waste of life, old prick. You oh. <laughs> You know those people who when you're like, Oh, I hope they come visit me, it's a it's a burden every time they have to do it. The kids don't want to come. All the smiles you see when they visit you, they're fake. They're all fake. Because we want to make sure that grandma feels good in her later years. Just roll over. They start you start to start scimitar scimitar. Oh hey man. Hey Danny, take a look at this. Someone like you would appreciate it. I don't think that's funny. Are they playing like I don't think that's the funny. music in the back? I don't think it's funny. Come on, man. Well, you're Mexican. You must love this music. <laughs> oh, come on. I thought you people had a sense of humor. Don't take it seriously. You people. Well, you people don't have a sense of humor, dude? God. You're such a wet blanket, Diego. Jesus. Video clips or telling jokes that make fun of a person's race or national origin is unacceptable behavior at Waffle House. Here at Waffle House. But not outside, out back after the shift. Age, sex, or religion, you have to do what we call the gridiron system. Where we play your hand in a waffle maker for 4.5 mm. seconds and brand you as a piece of shit, but you earn your spot back to work here. That'd actually be kind of sick. You have to put it in there and it's like you're marked, but it's like, well, you paid your due, so all is fair now. There's like a three mark system. Yeah, they mark both your hands, and then the last one is they they fucking the uh, spatula that's all hot. They get a red hot and they put it in between your mouth like that, and they give you like a joke or something. Oh. Hey, what's up with James in the beer? They told me. What's up with James in the beer, beer, bitch? I don't know why I get such special treatment. I think it's because he's a Sikh. I don't like those people. Me neither. What? Oh my God, that was yeah. racist. I don't know. But that's because he's a Sikh. <laughs> What? Yeah, I don't like those people. I wish I could grow up my beard so I could get some pussy here at Waffle House. People, I look a lot better with a beard. I hate working with Gary. He gets so many breaks. Yeah, I think he's got like diabetes or something like that, but that's a likely excuse if you ask me. <laughs> Fuck your diabetes. Like I don't know, his like blood sugar's all wacko. I fucking hate that fat piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, man, why do you take so many breaks when we work? I just have to check my blood sugar. Why? What's wrong? You taking so many breaks means we have to cover for you. My my man. My if I have to take a few extra breaks, I don't see what the diabetes going. is my Honestly, business. I, I'd get on the diabetes hate train. Dude, if your fucking diabetes is acting up that much, why don't you go work somewhere else, dude? <laughs> <laughs> like hiding in here and stuff. Uh, I gotta check my blood levels. <laughs> I'll, be like, I'll be like, get the fuck out of here, then, dude. I work just as hard as everybody else. I work just as hard as everybody else for a fraction of the time. I love all these scenarios. <laughs> It'd be so fun to act in one of these. It'd be fun to come up with one too. What was it say? Yeah, what if there was a guy like this Indian dude with a beard and the other guys are jealous of him? I'm like, perfect, write that down. Yeah, what if a guy has like diabetes and everyone's. Ishtar, 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 yeah, Scimitar. I hate that shit. Yeah, go ahead and put that in there too. I like to think that all these people are just like, yeah, I hate that. You can put that one in there. I'd like someone like us to cook my food for me. I don't want him touching any of my food. I want uh -uh. him to do it. Sir, I'm sorry. Bo's the grill operator this morning, and he will be cooking your food. If that's not okay with you, I'm going to have to ask you to eat somewhere else. I feel like a more appropriate response is you could just be like, what are you talking about? What fucking year do you think this is? You know, like, I'd be like, dude, go f yourself. Leave. Well, I, well yeah, just, hey, get out of here. I mean, how uh, obnoxious is that? I just want to see customer discrimination real quick. It's the same scenario as just customers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why the hell does that guy keep going to the bathroom? Well, I, have to, dude, I have to check my blood out. <laughs> Wow, I've been here like five minutes. Are you kidding me? No one's even come over to greet me. I know they see me. Wow, I've been here five minutes. No one's even greeted me? Okay, well, I guess I'll just sit here forever then. What you just saw shows how a customer can feel like he was discriminated against. Waffle House does not discriminate against any customer for any reason. I definitely feel Corey looks like the kind of guy to discriminate against somebody. If I'm being a Corey, it's just like, what you see here is a lie. <laughs> that is a liar, folks. <laughs> We don't ever discriminate. That's just the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hi. Is everything okay with the food? Oh, yeah, thank you. Can I get some more Diet Coke, please? Here. <laughs> I will 
let you know right now, I have gotten that treatment before. Never taken it personally. Uh, not that I think it's acceptable, but I think it's funny when it's like, uh, if a Waffle House person said here and they slammed it, I'd be like, what a bitch. But at the same time, I'd be like, eh, I mean, they probably have, they're probably a pretty long day up here, if I'm being honest. These eggs are running. Can they be cooked again? And my waffle is fine. Can I get a new one? Yes, we have to cook these again. People like that get on my nerves. All they want is free food, and they are so rude. I wish they would just go eat somewhere else. This is Waffle House, not Taco House. <laughs> yeah, for a trading video. Looking right at him. This is Waffle House, not Taco House. Trend senior. Moi bien. Hola. Yeah, I'll cook your goddamn waffle again, you son of a bitch. And then last but not least, the most important of all these training videos is these harassment videos. Roll it. Hey, Mike. Hey, thanks for sending me this video. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Ain't it some wild stuff? Yeah, it's some pretty wild stuff, all right. <laughs> What do you think of that video was? What if it was cake farts? Bruce was sitting on cakes farting. That's some wild stuff, man. We should send this to somebody. Oh, hey, let's send it to Joanne. Dude, yes, get it. Dude, yes, get it. Just Tourette's guy. It's a Tourette's guy compilation. <laughs> <laughs> that Badger song you sent me last night was so funny. This is horrible. Why would y'all send me something so disgusting? All right, it's definitely one man, one jar. Oh, these guys are mm. Yeah, it's mm. beheading. Yo, how do they get the camera quality so good in those, huh? Hey, Becky, how's it going? I'm fine, thanks. God damn! God damn! Hey, Becky, how you doing? Hey, 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 how's it going? Can you excuse me, please? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like this is something that they turn an eye to because I feel like I see this kind of shit all the time in restaurants. Multiple restaurants are just being like, you play him. You acting up. Mm, this smells really good. What's that perfume you're wearing? Smells really sexy. Smells really sexy, a perfume. It's tag body spray. Yeah, no wonder you smell like a teenage boy. You know, I love looking at you. You have such a hot body. Let's go out sometime. What do you like to do? Sorry, but you're not my type. Oh, come on, gorgeous. Why don't you give me a try? What part of no don't you understand? Look, when I see something that I want, I usually don't stop until I get it. God damn, being that thirsty at a Waffle House at like 8 a.m. God damn, girl is down bad. She's going to Walmart afterwards, like Axe body spray. That's her. Mm. That's her. Oh shit. <laughs> I wish Pam would stop hitting on me and just do her job. When I say no, I mean no. Damn it, Pam. I'm gonna have the actor in the background doing this the entire time. You're down that bad at your shift. Unwelcome sexual comments or advances to an associate in an unwelcome manner is forbidden. What if Mika was like, that was kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> Two girls talking about Axe body spray and getting it on is kind of sexy. I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, can people not just get along? <laughs> Cut it off. Cut the recording. Cut the recording. More of the story is Waffle House is an anomaly. It's a dangerous place. The amount of videos online of people fighting and doing all kinds of dangerous shit is appalling. But I will say it's a beacon okay. of the American dream. Active. Dare I say it's probably one of my favorite restaurants of all time. Nowhere else can you go someplace at three in the morning after a I'll be right back. Being a little rowdy and getting an entire meal that you can gorge yourself on for seven dollars. And to me, that feels pretty special. And I seven dollars, it's like fifteen now. Or I would, go, you know, or I would use it, or I would go patronize it more. But no, worthless, worthless dead restaurant now because it's fifteen bucks for worthless food. Not worthless, but you know, not too good. Docking permission it's requested. Docking request Not too good accepted. of a deal. <laughs>
Jeez. Open and disconnect this video. Uh, did I mess up my video? No, I did not. Okay, good. Who works Waffle House and all of my brethren and sister and who have gone to Waffle House and eat there as well. God bless you. God bless America. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. What's up, everybody? This Thank is you, Papa Meat, for the excellent content for my channel. I've liked and subbed your channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on... Thank you, Ackman. I've liked and subbed to your channel. The Ackman here. And today, Blizzard has finally given in. At last, they have admitted that Overwatch 2 was just one big silly mistake. Or at least that is the implication we can draw. Because they recently announced in a blog post that they were opening up the conversation on 5v5 and 6v6. Now, the fact that they are even considering returning to the old format from Overwatch 1 is a clear indication to me that this was not the right creative direction for overwatch 2 it hasn't fulfilled its intended purpose for the developers mm -hmm. or the fans in other mm -hmm. words it's kind of like wow classic right you don't want to that to do that either you think you do but you don't yep you guys are right we fucked up our game again and uh so we're just gonna go back to the thing that you liked and resell you that isn't it funny to think about this like they spent all this time and effort adjusting the balance mechanics abilities team compositions and every facet of overwatch to make it fit with 5v5 and now they have to undo all of that work I might be the first to coin this term, but it, it's like they have to undevelop the game. This is undevelopment, uh, where you screw up the game so bad you effectively have to roll back like years worth of development. So today we're going to dive into this blog post and discuss the rise of Overwatch and how one of the most innovative games of the last decade wound up getting a pointless sequel. Are you with me? No. But before we jump into it, fun fact. Did you know every video game with craft in the title is a fucking banger? This is even more true with mm -hmm. the sponsor of today's video, Stalkraft. Set in the incredibly serious setting of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, mm -hmm. you play as <laughs> one of these guys in a fight to survive and extract. Yes, I'm serious. <laughs> like, I was sold on the art style alone. It's hard to explain something you've never really seen before. Stalkraft is a game that, while it looks blocky and goofy and fun, at the same time, it's like gritty and dark. You get to enjoy both the simple and complex pleasures with Stalkraft. Don't let the graphics fool you. Stalkraft has surprisingly deep progression and customization. Now, I'm not big into extraction shooters myself, but I can tell you for certain this one is worth checking out especially when it goes for the low low price of free it's like a paradox of fun two concepts you never imagined in your wildest dreams being crashed together into one solid experience i'll sweeten the deal if you download the game using the code the act man 24 i'll give you a free grab bag of goodies to start your journey off right and you can download stallcraft for free today on steam check the links in the description and pinned comment and thank you stallcraft for sponsoring this video and now for something completely different now first off, why the sudden decision to start shifting back to 6v6? While the hero shooter genre is seeing a bit of a resurgence with Marvel Rivals, you should check out my video on that, the game's fucking incredible, highly recommend. Also put a link in the description and pinned comment. Also come join my public- Hard nope. The X -Clan. It's awesome in there. But there's also Sony's Concord coming out in a few weeks. Valve is working on their own hero shooter. Concord? I think what, a few months oh, Valve's got a shooter coming? Oh, TF3. This is TF3. Yeah, three. He's stupid. He didn't... Yeah, three. For when these new hero shooters come out, it just so happens that Marvel Rivals started its closed beta period one day after Blizzard made this announcement. So it could very well be a coincidence. But as one trained in the Force, you know the true coincidence. You're a muggle. Now I'm certainly one of many who jumped ship or lost interest in Overwatch after two came out. Only muggles talk like you. To fill that void. 